Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm one of these people that's got a camera with a microphone built into it. It's a Logitech 920C, but I've also got a, um, a Yeti Nano, which is a smaller version of the Yeti microphone, Yeti Blue. And I just want to go check my settings. It seems to be defaulting lately. Yeah, the 922 Pro Stream is what the microphone store. I don't want that to do that. And I don't know. I, I got to find a way of disabling it. So I'm, I am only want to be on the Yeti. It sounds way better to me. Nano. Boom. Well, let's hope for that. Microphone is Yeti Nano now. How does that sound? It should, it should sound better. I was noticing during the ghosties that it had fall it, it had defaulted back to the other microphone. I didn't think it was as good. Let's uh, get a little more perspective going here. Raise it just a titch. Well, now the bar is there. Hold on. It's too far deep in. Look at that. I got John. I posted a picture of John Lennon up there. I love John. Uh, created two record shelf things to hold a record on either side. And I thought that was a good, uh, uh, kind of a nice touch for the room. And uh, that's Sue's little jazz corner. I call it Sue's jazz corner there. Welcome to the show. Amanda, you are the very first one in today. Nick Rideau, we love you. Holy smokes, this doesn't make sense. I can't believe you were saying that yesterday. It made a lot of sense. Sure, these are generalizations. But there are certain objective realities that come out of the um, you know, out of our biology, out of our, uh, and sociology falls upon biology on some level, right? If you've got breasts and you're nursing and doing all that, then, you know, certain uh, functions and roles are going to be proscribed for you as a result of that. You know, you want to go, you want to go kill the, the bear, the lion? Well, I'd like to, but I'm menstruating today. And as a result of that, you know, the cat may smell the blood and then things, you know, death could ensue. Heidi Ho, Art. Heidi Ho, Rich, welcome to the show. Hey, uh, Renee Kerman. Uh, morning, Rich. Sue, what's up for today? Renee, I'm doing my daily check-in on your channel. I, I'm wanting you to grow and grow and grow. I am excited about what I see from you. You've got talent, and your channel is doing really good. Okay, wow, you're growing, man. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Renee is now, uh, this is a daily check in. He's 871 subscribers. I am hoping against hope that you can hit 1,000, Renee, because that's a big mark for a lot of people. Anyway, congratulations. I think that's uh, wonderful. We disagree, Rich, but I still support you. How can you disagree with that? Like, what is the counter argument? What is, wherein lies the counter argument? This is the thing. I just don't get that. I don't see the counter argument. It's, for example, right? I mean, if you take, um, it's like form, fu function follows form. It's just the nature of it. It's why, you know, like in professional sports, <laughs> have you seen there's this new thing they've done over on uh, the daily wire something i i don't i'm not a big fan of daily wire by the way just full disclosure people like matt walsh and stuff not a fan myself personally the psychology the personality of the guy i don't like but they did have done a thing i forgot it's called lady ballers where trans <laughs> trans people such as myself get involved in women's sport and absolutely kick the crap out of these poor gals. And so, I mean, but these guys aren't even trans trans women. They're like, they're just guys that say, hey, we'll use the legal lo loophole, identify as a female, and they'll go kick the crap out of the ladies, you know. Uh, grower, not a shower. Fantastic. Uh, I was practicing my new speed dating skills with chat GPT. I'm now engaged. Fantastic, Chris. We had uh, the lovely Sarah, the raging tomato in yesterday. Tomato, tomato. Uh, Buxt is in the house. I like that. I like calling him, uh, Stefan, I'm going to call you Buxt for now because it's so cool. Buxt. It's like my dad. When I was adopted and I found my biological father. Now, I never met him. He passed before I found out who he was. And... Uh, but, uh, you know, his name turned out to be Louis Lee, Louis Lee. And it's just not a real ballsy name like Buxt. Who's your dad? My my dad? 
My dad, Steph Buxt. Steph Buxt is your dad? Yeah. Steph Buxt. It's cool. you damn straight, man. Damn straight. So anyway, Sarah was a lot of fun. Good sport. Uh, I think she's going to do very well with her endeavors. But folks, if you're not subscribed to Renee, get over there. This is the big push right now. Renee Kerman's channel. And he is really, holy crap. Thank you. Thank you, Vinyl Community. He just gained another 872. Thank you for that. I just want everybody responding. Bucks will kick your ass. Absolutely. So I got up early this morning, started watching the, the telly, as the Brits call it. What what you doing, right? So I'm watching Tally, Mum. I'm watching Tally, Mum. Anyway, I go over there and I'm watching some of the Beatle people. Because I like, you know, me and my Beatles, right? I love Beatles. If you saw the room tour, I love Rich's comment. I think it was Rich that left this one. Uh, it was, yeah, I think it was Rich. Anyway, it goes, uh, yeah, a little too much Beatles stuff in your room tour. It just launched the room tour. You can check it out and get in detail more about what's going on with this room and all the goodies. I have my CDs right next to me here. And the speakers, the setup, the gear, the pictures, the art. You know what the hell that is? That is explained in the room tour. So check it out on my channel. It's a, I'm kind of proud of it. I think it worked quite well. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive on it. Overwhelmingly. One of the better videos, because I'm I'm only in it for sitting. <laughs> I just sit in there because I wanted to have had this vision kind of, you know, like the Beatles free as a bird. Uh, 4D caught on to it pretty quick. <clears throat> With the camera swooping in, um, what do you call those things? Drones? Like drone-like to swoop in and over and up and around. Uh, Sue's camera work was great. She may become a demand. Yeah. Um, so, we, yeah, we wanted to just do the thing. It's uh, so Rachel and Sue got the jazz corner. Yeah, that's happening. Chris, welcome. Great use of the gimbal. The gimbal was used to effect in the video. Uh, the Beetle Shrine. Well, the whole room's a Beetle Shrine on some level, some level, just because I have a lot of their content. And so speaking of Beatles content, I go over to Beetle E. Tone's channel. I threw him in the title of today's show because he's got a great channel. He's a good guy. He's a good lad. He's a likely lad. The Vinyl Jukebox, Ben, is here. Hi, Ben. Welcome to TV show. Uh, we're talking a little bit about FOMO today. Beetle E. Tone's giving me the FOMO. Do you know that I do not own the Beatles BBC on vinyl? Alas, alas. I got it on CD. It's readily available on compact disc. Uh, there's two volumes of it, four discs and all. I don't even have the second BBC, but it's, you know, I don't know. It's not mandatory, uh, you know, to, to what extent, you know, but still, the BBC is a beautiful album, and there's certain albums I missed out on because I was more collecting. If any physical media, I was collecting CDs. I didn't have a record player at that time, a turntable. And uh, so, uh, Let It Be Naked, I bought the CD, right? Let It Be comes. Oh, oh, oh Let It Be is there. Uh, Beatles 1, oh, get that CD. So, I, I got CDs on those things. And, of course, those aren't the money shots. The money shots are on the albums. Rachel, are you enjoying the Beatles Cups I sent you? Yes, Renee, very much so. Very much so. Because it's got Beatles on it. You know I me am love Beatles. Me am love Beatles. So I'm watching the, and I'm very grateful to you, Renee. It's very kind of you. I've got your package of stuff. The snow's melted. So I can get my car out of the garage today and get things going. Good morning, K uh, Rach. Hey, James. Yeah, I do like Kate Bush a lot. I've got her on vinyl. And I've got her on uh, compact disc. In fact, I've got that uh, this woman's work. You probably saw the room tour and are familiar with it from that. I want to go and make watch my own TV show here for a bit, and make sure you got a you make sure you got a um, a, a wrench, a spanner, as our uh, Brit friends say. All right, let's go, and then we'll go to live. Yeah, James, you need that man. That is uh, welcome to the show, James. I, did, I assume you saw the room tour. Anyway, um, we had a lot of fun putting it together. You know, we came in here. 
We built the shelves here ourselves. They were just pieces of wood. There's actually a video on my channel in the shorts, you know, YouTube shorts feature. I went, we got them, went to the, uh, you know, what do you call it? Warehouse, you know, where they have the wood, the lumber yard. And I said, I need three quarter inch pine, uh, birch, three quarter birch, hardwood, right? And you need it. I need it cut down. And if you're going to build shelves yourselves, folks, you want three quarter inch birch. I learned the technique from uh, Randy. Dead Wax is a carpenter, finishing carpenter by trade. Vito has arrived again. Vito, welcome back. I'm glad you reconnected with this channel. You were saying that you had lost touch with us for some time. And, uh, and now you're back on board. Vito, who's your favorite band? Who do you like? Let me know in the comments below. And we'll try and orientate some of our uh, content. So we want to keep everybody happy here. You know, we, we don't want to just do Beatles. Uh, we want to talk Rolling Stones. I got Rolling Stones. I believe that's the Rolling Stones right there. Bob Dylan. I love Dylan. A lot of Dylan. Elvis. I love a lot of Elvis records up there. Uh, so, you know, I try to be eclectic, but I got to be true to myself. I can't just fake it, right? You can't just go out there and go, oh, I'm so eclectic. I'm the Oasis fan. Remember me, Oasis. Well, if you saw the room tour, you'll know that's uh, Noel and Liam up there and a pride of position. And I just picked up uh, their, um, uh, their Live at Nebworth, which is an amazing high energy concert. I love that album so much. It's double album. I got deluxe CD or whatever they call on it. Beautiful. Uh, thanks, Rach. I have all the K pushes, 45 records, CD videos, everything. Oh, okay. Kate Bush's 45 records. So you're a huge Kate Bush fan. She's absolutely brilliant. Kick Inside remains my favorite after all she's done running up that hill. Uh, uh, the Dreamer, all this stuff that she's done. Mm <laughs> hmm. And that's my fa my favorite from her. But yeah, I've got her box set up there. And then in the shelves, I got about five of her albums up there. Five of her LPs in my collection. Uh, let me just do a quick look. Kate Bush, I'll give him a rundown. But Kick Inside is my favorite. Uh, Kate, oh, I got the red shoes. Yeah, I got red shoes. I, in fact, I think I've got double copies of red shoes because it's also in the box set. So that's something. All right, uh, that needs to be gifted away to somebody because I got doubles of Hounds of Love I got, Lionheart, Never Forever, The Dreaming. So uh, not bad, not bad. You know, she she wasn't the most prolific of artists, you know, but uh, when they did the uh, Stranger Things TV show, uh, when Running Up That Hill came along, Cloud Busting, all that came out, uh, there was a lot happening. Yeah, I got bootleg uh, CDs of that in the 90s. A low sound quality, but new album sounds good. Uh, don't bug the pumper, the, the flipper, the pumper, the flipper. Don't bug William. He's a good boy. Hi, boss. How you doing? <laughs> good to have the boss in. Uh, what kind of uh, speakers do you have? These are ADS M1290s, ADS Audio Digital Systems from Korea. Audiophiles grade speakers. Uh, they were in 19, and they're called M1290s. They were the anniversary edition of the M12s. Better. Uh, you can look for reviews on them. You can look at ADS M1290. Google it on the net, and you'll get some reviews on them. Really nice, tight, beautiful speaker, audio quality, highly regarded speaker. Uh, you can do, uh, what do they call it, by wiring, you know, so you can get two amps or you can get, uh, you know, a feed so that you've got one channel dedicated to bass and the, the other to, um, you know, treble. But, you know, I just, I like them the way they is, and that's the way it goes. I will kick your ass, Rach. I just got the kick your ass coffee mug. And I am currently enjoying a nice hot cup of, of Joe. Man, you got to have that in the morning. I'm big on that. Tori Amos is a very interesting artist. Tori, Tori Amos. Now, I do not have many uh, Tories, many a Tori stuff. Let me go in my collection. I don't have her on, on uh, I certainly don't have her on vinyl. I know I've got, like, I think just the single CD from her. I got Under the Pink. 
That's the single thing I own. 1996, under um, uh, 1996, uh, under the pink. And that's it. And that's all I have. Now, she's a very interesting artist. There was a girl that we had, a lady, young woman, in the vinyl community. And she shut down her channel. And she was growing like leaps and bounds. She was going to be so big. Does anybody remember who I'm talking about? You know, it's been a couple of years now. And she was so nice and such a gifted communicator and spoke with such earnestness and such uh, sincerity and such a depth of feeling that I just loved her. But I, I just, her name escapes me right now. Uh, John Marino, yeah, this is me, man. I'm not an audio snob, but I appreciate high-end audio. When I went to my boss, I tell the story back in 1982, he invited me over, put a glass of wine in my hand, sat me down in his music chair, have a seat, kid. I'm like, you know, in my early 20s. I go, all right, man. <laughs> nice day. This is great. Wow, what a place you got here. Had bookshelves, wooden bookshelves, grain, wood grain everywhere. Beautifully polished wood, you know, natural wood finish. Wood stain, natural wood stain. Books, he was well-read, illiterate man, illiterate individual. Sadly passed, sadly passed. Young, passed young. I think he did a little cocaine. But anyway, uh, he sat me down in front of his stereo system and he played. He said, what do you want to hear? Abbey Road? <laughs> Abbey Road? And so he played it and, and he played classical and he played some jazz and he played a whole bunch of stuff and it just blew me away. I'd never heard a system like that. And I went, Oh my God. Oh my God. I knew right away. But I mean, cause I listen, man, I mean, my gang, my pals, my buddies, we drive around in the car, uh, throw an eight track in it. He had a Craig power play. It was like a toaster in the car. It was a huge thing. In fact, I think we called it the toaster. I said, where are you going to, Where's the toaster? Going to drop it in. And uh, that would just be crazy, man. Uh, Rachel, I watched your room tour. It's very nice. Sue, very nice jazz records. She's going to keep it up, Johnny. She's doing good. Uh, as much as worthy right now, do some woe up and smile. Uh, Stefan has a great, or boxed, I should say, boxed D. Uh, study permeates the dreams for D, the power of the ultimate confusion. Wow. That is, wow, something. Where's Wax? Probably getting a $12 iced coffee beverage at Starbucks. I don't know. I don't know if he does that. Uh, uh, Stefan likes the uh, BLZ tracks. Yeah. Uh, ba, 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 ba. 4D man dreaming of stunty. That happens. He's very attractive. Anyway, Tori Amos, very troubled um, artist. You know, she had, had suffered at the hands of abuse. Many women do, unfortunately, in our culture. Mikhail. And that's, uh, Renee said that, Rach. Yeah, Renee's fantastic. I know. Look, Rach, I watch your room tour. Nice, Sue. Very nice record. Keep it up. Fantastic. So that is great. I'm so proud of, holy crap. Hey, folks, thank you for responding. Hey, girl, got long, long hair. I got a hair in my mouth every now and then. Hate it. Uh, Renee, congratulations. You've just hit 870 six subscribers i'm so proud of you keep working keep putting out the product renee when are you going to do another video um i want to watch that okay uh homoerotic dreams that's interesting oh uh, you said Jade. oh sorry sorry renee uh shave your tongue yeah steve martin reminds me of steve martin for some reason maybe he done that uh, anyway, so I'm watching uh, Beatley Tone, and holy smokes, talk about the FOMO, because again, I, I came back into music during the CD era, I got rid of all my records, yeah, all of them. I had a Paul McCartney in Russia, uh, the Russia one, you know, I've got it again, but I had that floating around for years, my friend gave it to me during the CD era, where I didn't, have, you know, there it was. Uh, we got Swedish uh, winter going on. Hello. Oh, me, I'm love. Forever love, Cherry. True. Me, I'm forever love, Cherry. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. 
so I'm watching Beatle Tone and he's on the Facebook marketplace in England and he's picking up like he got the Beatles at the BBC for 15 bucks, 15 pounds or something. So it's like $30, like an incredible sale. And they had the Beatles love and they had a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, Rich, I'm going to put a new one soon to show everybody my new video. Yeah, yeah, please do. Get on that. Make it happen. Because uh, you got a good collection, Renee. I mean, I mean, uh, what you've got there is so amazing. All the big bands, you got a huge doors. I think you got all of uh, Black Sabbath, all the Aussie Sabbath. You got it all. Okay, I I got to do my speechy. Boston, New York, near the posies. Well, I like the posies. This man, you know, probably me and blue. And there you go. It's the best of the posies. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Choba B. Choba B. CCP. Rachel, your camera's there. Listen, wife. Dang it. Uh, here, let's move it in closer so I, she can't tell. Okay. <laughs> She's fine. She's in the other room. She's far and away. I have a reoccurring dream about wings. That's interesting. Now it'll be a beer on Soundgarden. Fantastic. You should be the chef on a famous TV show for kids. Yes, I'm fluent in the speech. I'll tell you that much. So Tones had, uh, you got the BBC. Again, I only own it on CD. Beatles Naked, I only own it on CD. Let it be naked, only CD. So it's too bad because I get FOMO when I see people holding up their vinyl of it. You know, I go, oh, shit. That thing goes for like 200 bucks now. That's stupid. Uh, oh, my Liverpool uh, from Liverpool box has been stuck in my local postal facility for a week now. That is frustrating. Why is it? Is it because of the snow? Hmm. Silibdik. Law and order. My God. Needs to be tilted away from those rotten Gallagher's. There they are. Hey, whoa. There they are. I like Oasis, man. Live at Nebworth 96. So good. So freaking good. Um, so anyway, and then the other thing is a Beatles Anthology. There's another one. I got it on CD. I got the set. 95, 1995, all on CD. And here I'm watching... Tone over in England. He's got a great Beatles channel. Everybody should be subscribed, especially you Beatle people. You got to be subscribed to Tone and my buddy Beatle Dave too. Those are my two favorite UK based Beatle channels. Uh, you know, there's other ones too out there. Heaton, forget his name, Heaton. And then there's another guy, John Heaton. And there's another, I forget the other guy's name, but anyway, they're big. Uh, Vito goes Glastonbury 94 95. Are those available out there on CD as well, or are they bootlegs? I've got, um, why do I want to say alcohol and cigarettes? Oh, I got the master plan. The master plan for Oasis, an absolute must have for people. Those are incredible B sides. But let me tell you about Oasis Live so I can help Loki understand why they're so freaking fantastic. So I'm listening. Uh, to the Nebworth, uh, you know, uh, 1996 concert or 98. I think it's 96. But anyway, it is so good because you've got, you know, Leem. He's leaning forward with his hands behind the mic. His style is singing. It's not my favorite, but he's got his own style. He loves Lennon. So, you know, what can I tell you? Liam's leaning in there and he's singing away and Noel is just screaming on that guitar. It's just pure. It's just hits right where I live, man. Screaming rock and roll guitar. guitar. Just wild. Pentatonic uh, guitar laden. Squelching, screaming, screaming, buzzing. Rock and roll riffs. I highly recommend the album. The energy leaps off the thing. Sue and I were listening to it in the car when I bought it. I just purchased it. Put in the car. And I turned to her. I said, this is unbelievable. The excitement, the energy in it. So I highly, highly encourage people to go out and get, especially if you are you don't know Oasis and stuff, 
And again, vocals are always a thing with a band. Liam's very distinctive. So he's, is he my favorite vocalist? No, not by a long shot. But the band has that something. They have uh, magic. And uh, I highly encourage people to check out Oasis if you haven't. I've got uh, a lot of them on reissued vinyl. I've also got everything, the main discography on CD. Uh, do you have any of the hot wax books? Well, you got to teach me about the hot wax books, James. What's I don't know those. You got to teach me. Great thing, James, about the vinyl community is that we all learn from one another. People bring different things into the equation. Go, hey, have you heard of this? Have you seen this? And then you go, no. Like, here's the thing. If I was in England right now, this series of books, uh, these CD, DVD combos uh, from uh, Steve Wilson, the Jethro Tull series, if you're in England, go get them right now. They're affordable. Uh, the, um, you know, uh, Snot is running on his own. Oh, Aqualung. Aqualung is available. It's out of print here in the in the North America. But if you're in England, go get it before it goes out of print. These are beautifully, beautifully done. And I tell people many, many, many times that what you want is you want a whole bunch of them because they sound great. Not only do they sound great, but the packaging is so lovely and they look great on a shelf. They're like a little library that you have. I've got... Uh, seven of them so far in my own collection. Thick as a Brick, Benefit, uh, Broadsword and the Beast, Heavy Horses, uh, A, Jethro Tull, Alamode. Uh, I call it A album, but Alamode. Jethro Tull, Stormwatch, and uh, this was the first one. They started out kind of as a, as a bluesy, pro, uh, kind of a bluesy-based band, and then they kind of... Um, they met them. They, you know, they changed. They morphed over time, incorporating more things. Uh, they were books with listing of bootlegs. Okay, uh, James. For me, bootlegs. My bootlegs were really focused on the Beatles back in the day. I was such a Beatles bootleg person. I never was a big bootlegger. I had a few bootlegs. I had about twenty of them. But Harry's a guy that's got millions of them. Uh, Rachel, how are you doing with sending out the ghosties? Just wondering. We haven't made a move on them because we were snowed in, Johnny. And in um, in this part of the world, when we got snow, the city comes to a standstill. Now, because we just, it's the first day where the where the ice is melted and everything, I do not want to go out to the to the store today or, or to the uh, post office today for obvious reasons. Nobody's been able to get the post office unless you had a four by four, right, four wheel drive. And so because of that, I don't want to be in a big lineup. I want to wait, let it, wait a couple of days, let the, let it dissipate, get things returned to normal. Then I'm going to get out there and get every. we're going to get everything mailed out. Uh, yeah, this is one I want to get, Aggie. Uh, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds on uh, Cobus that popped up on my recommendation list. I don't know what QO Buzz is. Don't know what that is. Hi, Mirandy. Welcome. Yes, I subscribe to Billy Tones. He does Beatles stuff on video. He sure the hell does. Uh, oh, 75, it took three buses to get to a Mick Abrams trio performance in London. He was great. That's fun. Those are kind of fun. Do you get cabin fever? Never do. Never do. Well, seldom do. I, I guess we all do at some point, but generally not. Um. Okay, Sue, so Sue says we're going to be there on Monday. Sue's got it figured out. So it is, what the hell? Is it Saturday today? Yeah, it is. All right. So, we're yeah, it'll be Monday. We'll do it on Monday. Maybe Sunday. Maybe maybe take a surprise attack on Sunday. I think they're open on Sunday. The mail, is the mail open? Uh, Sue, I don't know if she can hear me. I'll write this. Sue, is the mail open Sunday? Because I think Sunday is probably going to be a better day than um, than Monday. Because Monday is the first day of the week. And if they're closed Sunday, then you're into another jam-packed situation. So Monday is not the best day to be doing mail. Uh, Sue, so I feel bad that Rachel locked you in a room. Yeah, it happens. Uh, 
Okay, Q O B U Z, Kobaz, amazing. Of course, Master Matters, not all high res. Hmm. So, this is the mail open on Sunday. That's my question for Sue. So, Barry, Tone's been saying he's been on uh, Facebook Marketplace and he picked up like uh, Beatles BBC, a triple album for $15, 15 pounds, 30, U 30 USD, kind of, they're not even 30 USD. It's just a steal of a deal. It's unbelievable for Canadians. 15 pounds I can deal. I can deal on that. So you get a little bit of FOMO because he, he bought that. He bought love. He bought a couple other things uh, that he was able to get. Uh, th 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 uh, so anyway, he so he was showing a bunch of stuff. It was really good. Don't talk about that, so shh. There's, don't let them uh, shh. Uh, yeah, she's out. Sar exactly, Sarge. No, uh, the good news, Sarge, is the snow's melted. So uh, uh, God took care of it with the rains. You never... Mazzy hates the song Mamonia. Paul McCartney just dropped yesterday a a visual, a kind of a... They're coming up with an anniversary edition of some sort because it was released in 73. So it's like the 51st, 51-year anniversary of uh, Band on the Run, a deluxe edition, remastered, remixed, I guess. The usual. It's such a great album, mind you. But anyway, it's getting the um, half-master treatment, I guess. Hi, Patrick. Welcome. I like it. I, I've always liked the song. Mazzy, Mazzy doesn't like it at all. We do live in a tropical part. We're actually in what's called, we're in a temperate rainforest is where we are. If you look on, you know, geological maps or whatever they call them, climate maps, we're, we're uh, identified as living in a temperate rainforest. So that's what we got. And it's very desirable. A lot of people in Canada come out here to retire. Uh, it's expensive here. It's more expensive than other parts in Canada because everybody wants to be here. Uh, okay, Rach, I'm coming on the show, 8.30 my time. All right, buddy. I have to do a few things out of my apartment. Do not worry. I'll be coming up. Okay, good. Uh, my buddy Renee is going to be here, so this is going to be fun. We're going to talk about records and stuff. Any Fairport convention? Yeah, Mike, I got one. I got. I just have one Fairport. I should have more, but I only got one Fairport convention. Hang on. Let me tell you, because the one with the playing cards on it, it's called uh, Full House. Full House. That's my only representation. Also, it does it does appear in the Think I'm Going Weird original artifacts from the British psych scene. So I guess they appear on there as well. I've got that as well. Folks, if you like psych, like Christopher, heavy psych. I haven't shown this for a while. This is a great CD set. Think I'm Going Weird. And this is beautifully packaged. And I know uh, our friend... Uh, Yesterday's papers talks about see the CDs in there, but it's got articles and and um, talking about the different bands that were part of the British psych scene in the uh, in the sixties. So well worth collecting if you're into that sort of thing. Think I'm going weird. I have a few things like this that are a little off the beaten path. This is also interesting. This collectible. Uh, this is. Um, I don't want that band. Uh, this is called All Your Ears Can Hear. Underground music in Victoria, my hometown, British Columbia, Canada, 78 to 84. This is largely uh, comprised of metal and punk bands in the in the Victoria, British Columbia scene from, uh, from that period of time. And I have a feeling my buddy Jason Flowers had something to do with this. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, our uh, our hometown, but different bands. People I knew are actually in this thing. People, you know, back in the day. What's going on, Loki? Don't freak out, man. But you know, it's kind of a, a good look at that scene. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, Claire. Okay, uh, the room video was fun to watch. By the way, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm proud of it because we employed, employed our gimbal. 
And, you know, I want to be creative with the shots and the, and how we put it together. I thought it, it, it was it was a good job. I think, it you know, for an amateur, it looked pretty good. Rachel, I spent all night getting Renee more subs on Jasmine stream, and he won't even acknowledge me or say thanks. Take a slip and wrench, Dean Gray. He who have not done anything of the sort, although I hope you sent people over there. I'm trying, Rich. He's trying. Uh, various think I'm going weird. Original artifacts, Brit Psych. Yeah, now on my want list. Thanks, Rach. Yeah, you want that one, Christopher. It's a very nice CD set. I think you can go and get it off Amazon. Is there an Amazon.svg.co.svg? All right, let's see what else is happening out there. Um, oh, do you like the group Renaissance? Yeah. Now, Renaissance is interesting, James, because it had... Uh, uh, Keith Ralph uh, from, you know, famously the blues harmonica boy uh, from the Yardbirds. And I th I'm not sure if he was with Renaissance when he died or, you know, or whether he was still with him. And it was, uh, yeah, brother sister team were in there, whether it was Ralph's sister, somebody else. I don't know much about them, uh, to be honest, James. James, where are you? Are you in the UK? Uh, Rach, you should have had Renee on yesterday's show. I know it was a big uh, dating show, but there was so much going on, you know, and we did get an, a sense so as we did a lifetime demonstration of uh, how to do uh, this dating thing, a uh, quick dating or some sort of thing, they call it. Uh, those first five Fairport albums are stellar, and the few that after that aren't bad either. Uh I loved Ashes Are Burning as a kid. Holy smokes. I've seen the Northern Lights before. I live in a bubble. Yes. Bubble girl. Uh, I saw the uh, second incarnation of Renaissance with Annie Halsam in London, 7576. Keith Ralph was no longer, he was, I don't know what, I think Ralph departs around that time. I think Keith died. <laughs> Keith died around that time. Uh, yesterday's show was triple. Uh, Triple the best. Fantastic. Uh, did uh, AJK have porn stars? No, there was no porn. AJK was a complete gentleman. He showed up some of our biggest channels in how to properly, I don't know, impress a lady dress. I guess the expression dress for success is a thing. And AJK really uh, uh, epitomized a lot of that, at least from where I was coming from. Huh. I got a, a duster thingy here. That's good to have. All right. Um, yeah, AJK came to the dance. Um, Johnny L. Okay, here's a shout out for Johnny L. Rachel, I'm not advising all the Renee subscribers. Don't go to John. Go to Johnny. Yeah, but subscribe to both. It's not a competition, Loki. You're making it more like a competition. Okay, I don't like that idea of making a competition. Now, folks, in a little bit, Renee's going to come up and join us here with the other children. Just see how things are going. My hope is for Renee. He's on his way. Currently, he sits at 883 subscribers. And I just want more people to be subscribed and support Renee. Also, the room tour, I really wanted to promote uh, David Pedroja from First Point on the Moon. And I chose the song Afterlife from this album. And what was weird is I saw uh, Matt, Matt Basterson, Bat Masterson out there, Matt Basterson. And he uh, did a, a short little showing some of his goodies and kind of did a mini room tour himself. And he had the same music, which I thought, wow, serendipity, right? Because we were thinking the same thing. It's got a kind of little bebop, bopping little rhythm that really, was, I felt, very suited to the room tour. And, uh, uh, Marcus, back it up. Just shush. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you know, James Ono Bowie was the first one to put that on the map. I'm just telling you, Marcus. You know, take it up with James Ono Bowie if you got any issues. Oh, New Jersey. Okay. I had a cousin of mine, like a 
he married into the family though. But anyway, he was like a big lawyer out in New Jersey and passed away in 2017 or so. His name was John Van Tuno, and he was like kind of a mob lawyer. He was working for the mob. He got he won a big antitrust suit against the government or something. It was weird. But anyway, he got a bunch of mobsters off. But uh that, you know, that's just the thing with genealogy, the stuff you find. Rach, would it be correct to say the music on your room tour had a Smith's vibe? <sighs> Smith's vibe. Well, Smiths are so unique, Wolfie. I hesitate to uh, apply that to it. It's just, it's just a, it's a bit of a drone, a, a real boppy drone is uh, kind of what it was. The Smiths, Smiths are so unique, and, and of course you get the Morrissey vocals on them. See, Wolfie, you need to get some Smiths in your collection. You need to get some Smiths. Then you make the call. I would say no to it. I would say no. It's just a great. It was just a, a great sounding song, Afterlife. I was speed dating with the uh, three new girls. It was so good. Well, we had the two in the audience, but Sarah was the star, and we were fortunate to have her on camera doing the thing. But the boys were all excited, and uh, they were you know, very anticipatory. So here's a question. Today's poll, I'm going to put it up. Okay. Uh, let me hang on. I got to go over to here to launch the poll for today's poll. Uh, start a Q and A. Start a poll. Okay. Should Rachie buy all the 2014 Jimmy Page Zaps? Okay. I'm going to put this on my on my to-do list for the year. It's going to happen. I'm just curious what you people think about it. I'm going to do it. I just started a poll. Let me see what you folks think. I've got one. I've got Zep 4. I've got a lot of OGs. I love Zeppelin. They're my number three band. But I'm tempted to go out and just for this. I've got them all on CD already. But I'm thinking of getting du duplicating them all from the 2014 you know, it's the uh, 10th year anniversary of these releases now. They are digital, but a, an emissary, no greater, no lesser than um, PB Thal has said that, you know, if you can't get OGs, you can't get your Robert Ludwigs and stuff, you know, you're not doing bad if you go and get the 2014s. And they aren't outrageously priced. You're not paying 150 bucks per like you are with the, you know, the Beatle OGs and stuff like that. That's that's a serious investment, right? And even the 2014 box set, uh, which I now have, other than I don't have the book, but I've got all the albums. Uh, Cranberry says I got them all, but I, I haven't listened to them. I've listened to all my Zeps. Everything I own, I I listen to. Everything I own. The only one in my collection that I haven't listened to yet that I own. Is the soundtrack to Silent Running that was just gifted to me? I'll, I'll throw that on today and, and give it a, a spin. Uh, Barry goes, the 2014s are very, very good. Uh, PB Thaw also said, dogs growing trees. Well, there is that. But he said it's like a third place finisher for him. This is the thing. PB Thaw says, you know, this is better, this is better. But as a third place option, if you're not going after the OGs, and I've got a lot of original pressings from Zeppelin, and the a real treasure came in just the other day, when a couple of weeks ago, Sue and I were down shopping, and I picked up Led Zeppelin original pressing, Canadian, 1979, an F cover for In Through the Outdoor with the original brown bag on it. Now that's a hard, that's a hard find. To find the, 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 there were paper bags. They were literally paper bags. They were made out of the same material as a standard paper bag. So they could break and rip and tear and people would throw them out or say, oh, this is just stupid. I'll just throw that out and keep the record. Uh, did uh, Paige push all his guitar work up in the mix for those releases? Well, they're digital. They play around with some stuff, you know, and also that. That tape, that doubling up of the vocal and the tape on the beginning, like when you hear a whole lot of love on Zep 2. And, you know, you hear the echo, way, way down, down inside, you know, down, down, 
woman, you know, all that echo, that's all removed. So that's a little disconcerting when you first hear it. You go, oh. And it's the same thing with the Beatles. I talk about that. I, I prefer the stereo because there's certain artifacts that come with the uh, 68 stereo that are absent on the mono. Blisters on my fingers being the most prominent. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chauncey. Uh, written and arranged by Jimmy Page. Keep in mind, Jimmy Page produced all the originals too. You know, back, he was working on everything. He's a bit of a hands on kind of character. I don't want to, I hesitate to say control freak. 40 goes, I voted no. Don't get those rates on Sue's behalf. Let's see how I'm doing. Maybe will I get them? We'll see. It's 50 50. 27 votes. Yes, 48. 52% say no. Wow. Critical crowd. Tough crowd. Uh, they are remasters. Yeah, I did. I say remix. I meant remaster. Uh, uh, King Gizzard uses cardboard paper bags instead of shrink wrap on their latest releases. Interesting. Save the planet. Uh, DJ Scott says, terrific room tour video, Rach. You guys done well. Thank you so much. You know, we built like we built this city and we're, we painted it. We came in, we looked at it. I said, I need a spot for my records. Originally, the idea was going to be I'd sit here and then turn the chair around and have the speakers left and right there with the, you know, the stereo in between. I said, that's, I don't like that idea. And because the distance from here to there is shorter than it is from there to there. And uh, so it created, and of course, these are floor, floor standing speakers. Uh, Rachel, you should delete yesterday's video on foot of my earnest criticism. No, I will not be, I will not be manipulated, Loki, even by a cute little guy like you. Um, uh, Paige is totally experimental. He worked with Basil Kirch in the 60s. Well, he was a session guy, so he's used to, uh, you know, here's what we need, lay the track down, do this. And, uh, you know, highly sought after him and uh, what was Big Jim Sullivan, those two guys kind of ruled the UK st uh, studios. Um, oh, uh, uh, by the way, folks, we got an assignment for you. This is our friend Scott. Hey, uh, come in. He's still on the mend. He's still healing up from uh, a very serious... Uh, pulmonary embolism, I believe it was, like a blockage in the lung. And it's been taken care of, thank God. But, you know, it's very, very critical, emphasis on critical. Uh, anyway, he has launched a soul tag. So uh, I took it on, and if I can do it, and believe me, soul is uh, not as a priority for my stuff, but I do, I do like some of it. I like Motown a lot. I like, you know, I don't know. But then there's stuff like that Sil Johnson album is so good, you know. I like anything good, you know. If it's good, I like it, you know. Uh, John Paul Jones, yeah, very good. And an arranger as well. Yeah. Uh, Rachel launched the skin tag, the skin tag. Holy smokes. But... Um, yeah, studio work, they were just excellent, the two of them. But, yeah, it's just this whole idea of, of vinyl over CDs, you know. It's going to be kind of nice to have a Let It Be Naked. But they're hard to come by now, and you're paying a premium for them if you find one out there, you know. But you got to be thinking, my generation, I'm turning 66, cough, next month, you know. Getting up there, man. Uh, Harry just went in and bought 170 uh 45s off a, a hardcore collector, but the guy's 80. So he's going, man, you know, I, how long have I got? You know, I'm 80 years old. You can be big headed and think you're going to last 10 years. So when you're 80, you go, wow, man, you know, you start thinking, you know, most of the, you've done, the race is done. And, uh, you know, given our mortality, right? You, you know, you can be big headed and think you'll last 10 years. Uh, ba, ba, ba. so we're going to have Renee up uh, later today. Um, I have bought my latest acquisition I'm waiting on now from England, Rubber Soul, first pressing, a dash four, dash four, Rubber Soul coming in. Now I just need Revolver. 
a revolver, and that'll happen later this year. So that's one of my goals for this year. We're talking yesterday about Butcher albums. I've never owned one. I don't think I ever will. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a Meet the Beatles 60th year uh, anniversary. Massey was talking about it. 64. His mom went and bought it for him. 60 years ago, 1964, Meet the Beatles uh, comes into the, you know, Capital finally wakes up and gets hold of the Beatles catalog from VJ. Uh, I want to hold your hand broke up the Beatles in America. And uh, there was no looking back. They finally figured out what England already knew uh, back in 63 and what the Liverpool knew back even earlier. So, yeah, that's very sad. There's a sad story about that. Uh, Rob Walker, his cat passed away. Uh, I think it's a lady cat, a feline, a feminine feline passed away. So bless to him, blessings to uh, to Rob and uh, comfort for the family. You know, we call them fur babies for a reason, right? And uh, so it could be very emotional. Uh, I think they should release 45 RPM singles, 45 singles, huh? Uh, okay, I know the cough, yeah, they got that cough. Oh, my God, they hold your testes, don't they, uh, Eric? For us girls, I think they just they just grab our bosoms. They just go, okay, and turn your head and cough. Something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, let's see. It's not Curtis. No, Curtis is okay. It was uh, the black and white uh, cat that he had. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, Matt. Great work over on your Instagram there, by the way, and great promotion promotional work for uh, our friend uh, David Pedrosian, First Boy on the Moon. Hi. Oh. You gotta move those things. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. I got my I got my note of love from Renee here. So anyway, do you want to join us on TV show? Oh, uh, can you? Hey, can I trouble you for a coffee? Or do you want me to do it? Okay. Thank you, school. This is talk. I'm drinking out of the shut the hell up, Massey uh, thing. Anyway, so yeah, so I was telling the kids, I'm thinking I got a poll going. You might, you might want to vote on that one. It's about getting the Led Zeppelin catalog. So there's very little, a few records, like nine records and all. I've got all OGs, but I'm looking, the only OG I'm missing is is uh, physical graffiti. Hey, Matt, well-deserved. You know, I was telling them earlier in the show that you and I kind of launched our room tours at about the same time. And we chose the same song, Afterlife, to, to kind of highlight both our stuff. It just maybe it was serendipitous. It just happened to be playing on yours. He had Afterlife. He did another one where he had Afterlife on it. It was I, I think it was Island Cup of Things. And, of course, it was nice to see the cups I had and, uh, Record Collector News was featured prominently there. Matt, I want to thank you again for all the support you've provided uh, me and Sue on this channel. We want to thank all our uh, Patreon people that support us financially. Those who just want to do a one-off dono, it's down there, Crystal at Shaw. Uh, this channel was demonetized by YouTube. They launched a big thing. Do YouTube shorts, they said. Make these little short-form videos so we can compete with TikTok. So I go, oh, I got an idea. Uh, because they go, you can use commercial music in your videos now. Oh, without copyright? Yep. No claim. You got 15 seconds. I go, okay. So then I said, what if I put a record CD and started spinning things around one of those display turntables like they do with models? Because I like watching on my other channel. I have a, a genealogy channel. But it's kind of a garbage channel. I watch everything on that, you know. Mysterious Monsters. Oh, Sasquatch, sub, and uh, so all this kind of silliness. And so apart from the genealogy, you know, I, that's my main go-to on the television over there. And uh, so I've seen these display uh, turntables modeling on them, like airplanes and different models that people put together, action figures. Uh, Rachel, about that, Paul, how will the outcome honestly sway? It won't. I'm just curious what the opinion of the crowd is. It's not really that it's going to change my opinion. I'm just curious what the feeling is about 
uh, about owning these. It's 50 50. It's really a divisive issue, Stunty. So I think it's more divisive. Nobody's really fully committed to it. So, Patrick, I was demonetized because YouTube said, I'm not creating my own content. I'm just doing, I'm just using the music. But I would disagree, I think, on some level, because I was demonstrating the music in a different and creative way, in my opinion. And so, anyway, that's, you know, that's the way they do it with uh, YouTube. YouTube's a little questionable that way. There are more challenges to YouTube than ever before. Uh, the X platform is starting to make uh, a way for people to, to uh, share video content over there. Things are happening. The backstory of me and love is very quick and easy. We have a number of people from third world countries. Sometimes they'll come and, you know, me and love you, Rachel. And they say, you know, they, because it's in broken English. I think it's charming. I think it's adorable. So I adopted it myself and came up with the me and love trademark Rachel's Ghost uh, line of products that you can buy from the Patreon store. So, folks, if you want to support this channel via Patreon, thank you, Sue. Oh, is this going to be the debut of the Renee Cup? Yeah. Holy smoke. Renee, I'm going to drink from thy cup. My cup runneth over, Renee. This is of the two. I think that I like this one. Uh, this is probably my favorite. They're both really good, but I love this. Look at that. Beatles, huh? Mm. Just embossed. I got two 2014s, two 2050s, and they are fine, says Dean. Yeah, I've got the 2014, the first Zeppelin I bought. The first three records I bought, Getting Back in a Vinyl, Close to the Edge, Electric Warrior, and Zep 4. Did they demonetize your entire channel or just said, nope, the whole channel. They said, you are not viable or for this or whatever. And I think also on another level, does the coffee, it always tastes better, better with Beatles in your cup. Put Beatles in your cup, Renee. That's a good cup of kava. I personally don't feel the Zep issues are bad at all. Could they be better? Absolutely. But how long will you wait for better versions, maybe? Yeah, it's not worth it. So, Sue, so they're very affordable, the Zeppelin catalog. Uh, what's affordable? I like 35 bucks per. Oh, i got to get my new jazz records. Oh, okay. Uh... Uh oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So what I do is I have to. Uh, how I'm doing it is, uh, you know, um, I, I'm dependent on the donos and on the people that support the channel that way. All right, I'll send a link out for you. Much better half if you'd yeah. like. Yeah. All right. Saturday. Saturday. It's free for all Saturday. And the part is free, free for all Saturday. Once again, there's that <laughs> Patreon. Uh, just because I had it in cash memory. And then, of course, we've got our merch store. You can go and buy a bunch of stuff. It's funny. Really want to work on that. That we got to do something with that. Uh, okay. Uh, I had FOMO in another lifetime when they stole my dowry and left me for dead. Your dowry. Uh, and then jump to the future. Good thing I got everyone this lifetime. Who's Billy Tons, is that why you're having Led Zeppelin? Uh, no, no, he's uh, no, no. He was on the uh, he was in Facebook Marketplace. Right. There's a link, Sue. And he went into uh, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. And he got a whole bunch of. Uh, yeah. He got um, like uh, the Beatles of BBC for like four, 15 pounds. The thing goes for like. A hundred bucks over here. Like oh, if so you go try and find it. Yeah, he we, Beatles stuff. <laughs> like what happened because of the way I collect. I got in CDs first, and then and then I because of Ron Baudry, I started when Ron showed the records. I started getting in, into vinyl again. Right. That's so why we have records. So yeah, there's a few Beatles things that I got, like the Beatles naked. Let it be naked. You know, is the thing. I'm voting no, says Dundee, uh, as I fear the investment might direct. From the righteous path, nurse with one. That's a good point. Here's my much better half. Put her over here. Boom. Okay. Welcome, Sue. Hi, everybody. Okay, wait. I got to put the comments on. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> okay. So uh, the Shangri La the gun, Mary Weiss. Let me look up. Is she the the leader of the pack? I hate to say that. 
Mary Wise. Okay, are they all gone now? Oh no, she is gone. <coughs> it's cranberry sauce. I haven't seen you since Christmas. Uh oh, Mary Weiss is gone. January 19th. She passed away yesterday. Born in 1948, so only 10 years older than me. Age 75. How did she pass? <laughs> uh, background. What happened? How yeah. did she? Any cause of death? What happened to her? Mary Weiss is gone, folks. Leader of the pack. Uh, she's uh, oh, she was so cute. Yeah, that's when I fell for it. Leader of the pack. Rum, rum, rum. My folks were always putting him down, 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 down. I love that song. We yeah. sang it like crazy, me and my girlfriends. Yeah, of course. It's a girl, it's a girl anthem song. Yeah. Hey, DJ. Anyway, Dave, welcome to the show. Yeah, Mary Weiss, Mary Weiss. Hi, Dave. Very sad to hear about this. Yeah, walking in the sand. Oh, my God, Matt, you're so right. I love that thing. Uh, remember. Oh, I love that song. Walking in the sand. Remember. Boom. Walking hand in hand. It was a great song. That All that cool. stuff, man. There's Scotty Damn. saying hi to Spoozy. Damn. Damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Johnny L. She sang Remember. Well, she was the lead singer in the band. And she had her two, the two sisters or whatever that were the backup gals. I think they were sisters. Renee has just subscribed to Stunty. Okay, great. Renee, you're going to be on a huge journey with that. <laughs> um, I just love Renee, and I'm so proud of him. Oh, by the way, everybody, thank you for subscribing. Um, just did a fresh Renee count. 891 subscribers as of right now. Bless you, Renee. Um, I'm so proud of you. You're putting out great product. Renee's going to be joining us in about half an hour or so. The Beatles England, yeah. yeah. Uh, Beetle Dave is here. I uh, bought Norman Maslow's book this week, Beatles England. It is an interesting book, especially for Brits. It's actually, not actually, it is a it's a beautiful book. Yeah. If you can get hold of it, it's uh we I wish I had all those pictures handy. Like we went to here, may I see that? Yeah, I just want to see. We went when we were in England, we went to certain spots and locations. <clears throat> yeah, we went to most of we went to just you know about you're allowed you to share the screen on your computer. Yep. Like go but into the got, if oh, you go no, into, oh, we'll practice that because right. that'll take me forever and it's annoying. Everybody. So when I went over, I went to the dingle. We've got all see, we've got all the photos on my mm. laptop, but you know what? The way they're set up, they're tiny, tiny. And it's really hard to kind of view something without pulling it up and seeing if you want to look at it. Listen, we actually <clears> got <throat> two hot chicks here right now, me and Scoosy. You're so lucky to have oh, us. Well. You hot chicks. <laughs> yeah. Boy, oh boy. Uh, okay, now. She was a pretty hot chick. So though, we went here. So remember we went here? There. We went to this. Right? Yep, we went there. We went there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in the dingle. And at the end of the street. Remember at the end of the street? I'll show you what that was at the end of the street. Right at the end of Ringo Street. It's a hotel from Sentimental Journey. It's right at the top of the street. And, of course, we went to Menlove, Menlove Avenue. Had to go to John's place. Went to uh, uh, Strawberry Fields. Went to Penny Lane. Uh-oh. Not enough light. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry, Renee. It'll be later in the show. Yeah. Do you want – well – so we went to different places, and, uh, and uh, I got my son to replicate the thing. Why don't we trace spots for a sec? I'm going to grab the pictures I oh, can sure. share. Oh, sure. No, that's fine, because you know how to get there. Uh, yeah. Yes. So we're going to do – take this in. Yeah. Right. Go yeah. right. right. We've never we never really played oh. musical oh. there. Okay. Yeah, it was my coat. Sorry, baby. Can I get by first? No, you go around and take scenic route. Jeez. Come on, Sue. Oh. Get with it. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. Sue, you got I, pillows I know, everywhere. Right. Can yeah. you play the music while you? You did music first. All right. Anyway, welcome, uh, welcome to the show. I'm because I'm here on the other computer. Holy smokes! I, I have some albums to show, non-jazz, Rachel. I oh have, yeah, and I have some jazz to show. Can you pass my jazz? Oh yeah. Okay, Rob. Here, so you went. Through, oh no, these are new ones. So you can evaluate. Show and they're OGs, all of them. 
Okay, do you okay. want me to show those now? Yeah, go do do yours because what I'm doing here is I'm going to get some beetle pictures. Rob, you can go first if you want. <laughs> okay, so this is an album from a Canadian artist. Okay. William Shatner, <laughs> the transport. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I wish we yeah. had that. Have you have you heard like the famous thing is he does Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds and he does. I think Mr. I've heard that on YouTube before. And, yeah, and the Mister Tambourine Man. Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah, but you know, um, that's I don't know, maybe fifteen years ago, Ben Folds produced an album with him that was quite good. Joe Jackson was on it. Oh, okay, whoever that is. Joe Jack, you know, stepping out. Uh, is she really going out? Yeah. Thank you. I know is that. she really going to take him home tonight? Okay. Fantastic. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Tim, University of Vinyl, found a copy of this. He said, this is the one you want to own that says um, in the Dead Wax uh, Water Face. Hello, Water Face. I don't know what that means. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Neil Young. Okay. Nice. And then this I found for cheap, but it's a fairly expensive record. This guy, Jack Clark, Clark, old number one. Kind Don't of pricey. He's, he's a, like, uh, well, I forget what band he was in, but he he was like, a, it's like um, alt country, you know? Okay, cool. All right, here's the two big ones. Oh, wait. And this is this is the one that I found out the credence that this is the plating is from the uh, analog productions version that, and it sounds really good. And this is only $22 on Amazon in the States. Wow. Nice. It's very, it's very, it sounds really good. Not probably not pressed on the you know best final, but it's really good. Okay. We these are the, two, these are the two big ones. Okay. Let me get this set straight. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is, Maybe in 1971, or uh, I haven't identified exactly, but it's one of the original first few years of the album. But inside of it is oh, 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 wow! Rob, I think that's Robbie Krieger's autograph, and it's to oh. Mike the Mailman, whoever that was. Oh, that's cool. All right, next oh. one is. Nice. Uh, doors, and I think that's Ray Manzarek's autograph on that. Nice, wow, cool. Yeah, yeah. So that was found. Oh, so those are keepers. If they get autographed for you, do you or lot well, more? They're, they're till Mike, whoever Mike is. So I, I actually be, need a copy of this. Mm -hmm. I think the copy I have is not so great. This right. I have a mono. This is a stereo. So this might go go the way of the doo doo. Okay. So does that mean you're going to auction it off? Uh, probably, the probably, mean probably, on uh, probably post it on like eBay or something. Oh, I see. Okay. Nice. Yeah, unless someone really, really wants it. But um, I, I want to see how this sounds. It's a real, This one is in probably VG to VG plus shape. This one's in really nice shape. Yeah. But I need a, I, well, I have all the doors except, I mean, I have the a, one of this. It's a later pressing that doesn't sound good. So, I don't, think, I don't think we have very many Doors albums, do we? we uh, we do. We oh, how so. many do we have? We have maybe four. Four. four, okay. four. I'm, mean, you know, I like the Doors, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not the hardcore doors, doors. Yeah. doors. But they're fun to put on once. Yeah, I've now. got like, yeah, go ahead. I'm assuming Mike maybe got murdered by a dog on his route. Good he God, the mailman. Mike. <laughs> Poor Mike. Mike, Mike, that? Mike. Mike didn't get McDonald's gift certificates last year for Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. poor Mike. All right, Susie, <laughs> uh, you can show your, uh, do your thing there. We actually have oh, a oh. mailman here. It's awesome. Well, wait, well, before Susie goes, Rachel, I didn't yeah, get go. to talk yesterday because of all the commotion. Yeah, there's a lot of. The night, uh, the night before last, for my, for my school, I did a screening of the Blood, Sweat, and Tears documentary, which is awesome. And I did an interview with the director, and it it went it went really well. So this director, yeah, John Seinfeld, directed what you would be interested in is the peop, is the United States versus John Lennon documentary. Yes, he yes, also, yes. He also directed um, Chasing Train, a documentary about John Coltrane. 
He directed. There's a one. He had did one about Herb Albert that it just dropped on uh, Paramount Plus. Um, so lots of over the last twenty years, lots of documentaries about musicians, and the interview was quite good. And he was. We were talking, and I was like, "Who's the hardest?" Blah blah to get stuff out of. And he said he had to interview Yoko Ono, and okay. she didn't want to. Talk. She didn't want to talk. And there's things he does to kind of pry stuff out of them. Uh, but uh, it was quite an interesting story about the, them to pry get her to talking about the what's a, a thing people don't really ask you enough of and blah blah blah. And it was the loving in in uh, Canada, the bedding. Okay. Yeah, about the Toronto, bed. live piece, Toronto. And they yeah, were yeah, also yeah. in, uh, I think, Montreal. They were. In yeah, she kind of said in in the middle of the night when everyone left the hotel room, they were there. She felt total love and connection yeah. stuff with with john so it yeah was a, it was a nice conversation i think we're gonna edit it together and put it out on the internet so it was good oh, neat. yeah that's cool yeah i was gonna mention something about credence clearwater we saw uh american War werewolf in london last night we watched the movie mm, again. again yeah and we had only seen it on uh vhs before so we saw it on was was it a dvd or a blu-ray we saw it on vhs no, last night. Oh, on Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Blu -ray. So it was a pretty good picture. But, man, it was good. And a lot of jump scares in that. But the Creedence Clearwater song was, it's just so good in that. Well, I believe Rick, Rick Baker did the effects. And, you know, that transformation scene is like, yeah. changed everything for movie making. Oh, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel was reading some kind of notes from the, was it the director or the producer? about the transformation scene? It was uh, the director, the Landis. The director, yeah, uh, Landis, that uh, he had kind of wished he had shortened it, that it was a bit too long, but he was so involved in like, he was so amazed by the effects that he just really wanted to show off what, the, what that guy could do um, with the transformation into the wolf, into the werewolf. Well. And also the car, I watched the, we watched the bit about how they did the car crash scene in uh, Piccadilly, Piccadilly Square. And uh, that was a maze balls. Maze balls. It was maze balls. Okay. Show it your, was, uh, show um, your goodies that you okay. uh, received there. Yeah, it was crazy at the end. And they're just like, everybody's like flying out of the bus and people are getting run over. It's crazy. Okay, so these we I got these we got these from Vinyl Buzz Rod, um, Rod the Vinyl Buzz. Yeah, and uh, he sent us some jazz records, which was really nice. So this was this. Haven't listened to any yet. Mm -hmm. They're you all should enjoy. they're all brewback. You should, yeah, you should enjoy that one. Yeah, so I like I like him, and then this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't remember anything about them yet. But I wrote them down in my book. And then this one, Jazz Impressions. Nice. Oh, they're on Columbia. Like most of them are, there's two Columbia 6i, I think. Wait a sec. This is a Columbia 2i. This is a, oh, on the crown. We don't know much about the crown. Uh, you know what, what, I I mean? do, what I do know pretty much on the crown, all the ones I've found, uh, maybe recycle vinyl they press them on. Oh, Typically, yeah. okay. they, they don't sound so good. They're mm -hmm. noisy sounding vinyl. Okay, that'll but, be interesting I mean, to play that one. Yeah. Um, and then there's another 6i, the, uh, this one here. Uh, that's, a, that's out of all the ones you've shown, that yeah. is a typical. Uh, that, that I think he was just a popular guy. but Very popular. I mean, he must have done, I bet he did a ton. That's a popular album. Okay. So that's going to be fun to check those out. I've been under yeah. the weather, so no listening. Now, now, my feeling is Paul Desmond, who plays saxophone on there, yeah, is, is a very enjoyable listening saxophone player. Very, yeah. Um, yeah, Rachel goes, oh, Paul Desmond's on here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know, I know, I think that's a nice segue into oh. a group that adds a horn playing, you know. It's right. very enjoyable. Okay. Yeah, and Paul Desmond's on this one, too. He's featured yeah. on here. Mm -hmm. And then he was a big drunk. Oh, was he? Yeah, big drinker. Oh no, these guys just got so messed up. Well, I know being a, being a musician in the '60s was not good for a lot of people's health. No, 
I think that's sad. Um, yeah. Uh, hey, so are we speed dating right now? Yes. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Whatever they want. Whatever. Whatever makes the crowd happy. Um, well, they would. They would like uh, villagers with pitchforks and fire to come to my house. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, Newport Jazz Festival. So was that the festival that was in the uh, Misty play Misty for me uh, movie? Was that the Newport Jazz Festival? Uh, that, uh, yeah, the I think Clint they Eastwood might have. Oh, no, it was no, no. Monterey. It's what? Monterey. Oh, it's Monterey. Because yeah. okay. the Newport East Coast, Monterey West Coast. Oh, Newport's East Coast. Oh, okay. I thought. Oh, Newport. Is Newport? Uh, Newport Jazz is. Isn't it Newport? Uh, Newport sounds like uh, West Coast to me. Well, the only Newport is Newport Beach oh, here. Rhode Island. Rhode Island, Newport, Rhode oh, Island, okay, okay. East Coast. I don't know my uh, American geography that well. Like a lot of, there's a lot of good jazz recordings from the Newport Jazz Festival. That oh. you know, there's a Duke Ellington that's very good. There's lots. The scene. To, to July third, nineteen fifty-eight, Ellington night, a Newport with the program at its midpoint. So it's the choice of Dave Brubeck as one of the jazz stars to salute Duke with ducal music at Newport was, and so on and so on. We'll have to see how that sounds. Okay, so what's going on with you, Rach? Are you making? I'm getting pictures? there now. Are you hacking into people's bank accounts? I am. Yeah, she's um, trying to. Uh, is I'm he... sending all the uh, folders over. I oh, you sent them over here. I'm sending them to my computer oh, okay. so because I don't have them on there. So I'm using Google Drive to send a folder of all these pictures. I got pictures of myself in the cavern and uh, on Matthew Street and uh, doing the whole thing. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Wait. See, they move on you. That's why it's hard to. That's how I timed out somebody by mistake. The chat no, should be allowed to move. Listen, you should never regret timing someone out, even if it's by mistake. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. CD4 quad. What's four quad again? I've been told. I can't remember. I mean, it's just, um, it was big in the 70s. In fact, Mazzy will probably come up here and show. Rhino has been reissuing quad CDs. They're currently. They're putting out albums that were record the mixed in quadraphonic sound. Oh, okay. You, get, you can get the CD versions now. Yeah, but what's quadraphonic sound even? It's like it's instead of two, right? It was in a mix for four speakers. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel told me. I mean, time. I have uh, four channels. For some reason, they. I mean, they they did it a lot for jazz records, like very desirable impulse jazz records, like yeah. Alex Coltrane and stuff, mm -hmm. were released in quadraphonic. Uh, I think we have a jazz quadraphonic, actually. Yeah, but they play fine in a normal stereo. Okay. Hello to all. Have a great weekend. Okay, we will. Well, I don't know. That's like when someone says that, it's almost like the dude <laughs> have a shitty weekend. Doom. Well, our roads are clear now, so we can get out and about, which is good. Now, how, how much actual snow did you get? We probably had about a foot and a half of snow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. A foot and a half you know, snow. I remember growing up in the winters back east, and my brothers would pick me up and throw me out in the snow. <laughs> and that probably says a lot to everyone right now. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. We did, uh, we would go tobogganing at this place and freeze till we were really like totally frozen and be crying to go home because yeah. we were actually frozen. We would do the sledding on the big hill. Yeah, we had a hill in our town like that too. It was great. Now, now MZ, what what's the deal with the name change? Let me know. Okay, what's going on here? Box. Robbie, you grew up? No. <laughs> Mentally, no. Physically, yes. I think there's a lot of people here that have never grown up. I'm sitting I mean, by one right now. Yes. Oh, wait a sec. I got to follow this. Hmm, minus 18. 
Minus 18 somewhere. All right. See, I'll, co about... I'll come back now because okay. it's uploading. You know, I feel old because it's technically not that cold, but I'm feeling cold. Watch your head on that thing. It's because we're old. That's what, what happens. Plastic Soundwave Cult is definitely guilty of not growing up. Oh, I see you can do this here. I'm just trying to, I, I'm not used to Rachel's computer. Mm -hmm. Oh, in Sweden, it's minus 18. Yeah. Well, we were like minus that with the wind chill the other day. It was really, we were like the coldest place in Canada a yeah, couple of weeks ago. It was, we were freezing. Do, 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 do. Oh, where'd you go? Waiting for you to go back. Oh, okay. I'm going to move. Man, that's creepy, that's isn't it? Right yeah. <laughs> I'm going back. Feel more comfortable over here. Well, anyway, that's downloading over there. Here's your pillow suit. Oh, yeah. I'm too short. Anyway, did you show your records? Yep, I showed my records. All right, good. I was busy in there. So I went over and Sue and I and our son went to Liverpool in uh, 2016. And we went to well-known Beatle locations. I got my son to pose in the spots where the actual fabs were all those years ago. And so we went to uh, Liverland, the Liverland Auditorium, where Beatlemania was actually created. The Beatles came back from Hamburg, and the Liverpoolians thought they were a German band. And so they, you know, a prophet is not without honor except in their own house, their own country. And uh, so I think that because everybody thought they were foreign, carried a little more of an exotic vibe, and people. Uh, Beatlemania really took hold. So it was at the Liverland Auditorium. We went there. Yeah. Litherland, I think they call it Litherland. Yeah, Liverland. Like and then uh, we went to the town hall where the Beatles got uh, the city, the key of the city or whatever the hell they did. They're all standing mm -hmm. up there in the town center. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. we went there. And that and looked was up at the, yeah. looked up at that. That was a cool street. Matthew Street. Drinking beer at 10 o'clock in the morning in the cavern mm -hmm. is a bit of a buzz. Anyway, so there's so many. Uh, I got all these pictures. So one of these days, now that I've got, I'm creating them, moving them on to Drive, uh, on Google Drive, then I'll be able to drag them over here on my computer and show them as part of the show, you know, from time to time. And then I had Sue and Regent Park doing uh, the anticipation cover with uh, Carly Simon. I said, I think it's this gate over here, and there's hundreds of gates. And so I kind of went around. Okay, everybody, that was not a brutal, when you're at the cavern. That was a brutal photo shoot. Yes. Because we got up early, we were starving. It was cold. We were walking all over Regency Park trying to find the right gate. Litherland, yeah. And then it was like, it just took forever. Yeah. So we went to Litherland, and uh, and then we went to John's house. We went to uh, the cemetery, you know, where the Eleanor Rigby is listed. There is an Alan or Rigby. McCartney gives a really good explanation for the song, independent of the cemetery. And yet there is Eleanor Rigby and right next to her. And the grave is right next, right across from uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the church where they met, where John and Paul met, where they were doing the summer fete, you know, with the quarrymen. Uh Anyway, very interesting. Folks, 139 watching. It is that point in the show where I do ask for the thumbs up to start pouring in. Uh, it does help us out. And uh, so far, let's see what we're doing for thumbs up. 20, I, I'm the 29 Perth. Okay, well, we're up to 36 now. Oh, well. Okay, it's interesting. I'm doing a, a poll on should I get the uh, 2014 uh, Zeppelins. Do you know, it's interesting. Most people think I shouldn't get them. 67% say no, 33% well, no, say yeah. no. What's so good about them? They are the best. They are the third best bet you can go. If you can't get a hold of an OG Zeppelin like Robert Ludwig, et cetera, PB Thel says you, you can you can do a lot worse than getting the 2014 Jimmy Page remasters. Okay. How much are they going for right now? Standard prices, 35 bucks, 40 bucks. Well, I, you know, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. I feel it in my bones that there's going to be a reissue coming out within the next few years. Yeah, but I mean, when you're 66, you know, you could be well, big. Well, Rachel, Rachel, you can make a, you could make a point to say you need something to live for. 
My grandfather's from Liverpool, so I went <coughs> back to uh, photograph uh, the homes and also the cemeteries in Liverpool, where uh, many of my relatives are uh, laid to rest. Yeah, we went to the museums in London. We did London. We, we started we in London. We didn't do the Tate. Our son did the Tate, but we did a bunch of others. Yeah. Uh, they were amazing. So, yeah, it was kind of a, you know, it was a, a pilgrimage of sort. And, of course, while I was there doing, the, you know, all the family genealogy, um, I was also doing the other thing. Uh, okay, Rich, find out what pressing physical graffiti I should get, will you? I've been asking for months. I thought this show would be useful for something eventually. Uh, Rage, the nurse with wound, righteous path, has dog stunty. Very encouraging for my nurse with wound collection. They aren't bad, you know. Like you think that, oh, a nurse with wound is going to be way out there, but they aren't really to me. I mean, I've, I've had a record that I came through here and I passed on to someone else. Uh, they sound fine to me. The just issued Zap for Jimmy Page remaster in November. Yeah, that's just the transparent, but it's still the same record that we got in 2014. You know, so it's a little bit of a marketing. How thing many? Like. How many do you have of them? Of what? Do you have any Zeppelin? Oh yeah, I got their catalog. I've got everything. I got I'm everything on. I, I've got everything on CD. I got everything on vinyl except for. Uh, physical graffiti. And I've got one of the 2014s. The rest, I've got like three copies of uh, Zep 2. None of them are a Ludwig uh, first press, but I got a Canadian first press on lead, a red label. Those are hard to get. Uh, okay, Rich, the point is to read out the questions to provide an answer. Okay, so the answer on your on your situation, I can't tell you. I would assume a UK first press would be the best sounding uh, physical graffiti. Uh, a UK first press. Uh, that would be my instinct, but I, you know, I can't go to the bank on it. I think we need PB Thal for that. Um, bu -bu -bu. I never liked the Atlantic US pressings of anybody. Always uh, distorted and noisy, the Atlantic pressings. Massey, I saw, I actually watched a bit of your rambling video with the uh, 60th anniversary of Meet the Beatles talking about the story with uh, your mom buying it for you. You had two copies. It's hard to remember which was which, right, when you got two. <clears throat> Newport, Rhode Island, home of the cow sales boy. Yeah, I'll tell you something about them. I know. 1970, 71, I had... Uh, the uh, hair, the the cow seal's hair, uh, 45, played it till it, you know, the grooves ran out on it. <clears throat> Were they a sad family? What happened? Well, that um, now I three, I three of them. Have one. They I just put out an album that I sent to Rachel. Three of them <laughs> are playing and touring and. Yeah, surprisingly yeah. good. Yeah, it's on the Omnivore label. Yes. Rich, do you think that the boys are wondering if Sarah's awake? I do believe that. I believe they're wondering about a lot do, about Do you her. think that um, AGK got arrested breaking into his neighbor's house yesterday? Um, Anything's possible, Rob. Anything's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, just bought uh, the latest physical. Or just go and buy the latest physical. Well, that's what we're talking about here, Dean. I'll probably get it anyway, you know. Uh, like the cow slips live album, cow slips or cow seals, cow's lips, physical feed, famously rough recording. My, I had an OG back in 75, 76, but well, you know, Rachel, I just, um, well, I know Piper Chris wanted it more than I did, but I sent him the U.S. Houses of the Holy you want to have. Oh, it yeah, it was like beautiful condition, it had the sash, yeah. Oh, it's it's good if you got the sound. It's hard to uh, it's hard to find. That's one of those things that seems to go missing. I've got an OG Houses of the Holy. I got a Canadian First Press. I've got, of course, I got what I want. Like my thing for collecting is what I bought when I when I was first buying records as a kid. So I don't care about Robert Ludwig's the way some people do. It'd be nice to have. Um, I'd have the Canadian. Right? I just want to have got my Canadian that, that first record. Press. That record sound. Yeah. Beautiful, it did. Hey, uh, can I show you? I found a hard to find record. Well, I don't know if it's a hard to find record. All right, let's take a look. I found 
an OG oh, yeah. uh, Lee Morgan, and this is. I would prefer to find the mono, maybe, but this is yeah. the OG stereo. You on that New York label? Yeah. I didn't pay it. this. I didn't pay much money for this, and I was very surprised. And it plays. You. It might look. It probably looks VG plus, maybe VG, but it plays beautifully, and it's. Yeah, it's like the OG one you want. Uh, really nice indeed. Now, of course, we got the you know classics at Tone Tom Poet Classic series on that Blue Note Classic. The things you know, again, I'm a self admitted. If people might not think this, but I am still in a very infancy of my yeah. learning about collecting and collecting jazz. Yeah. And one interesting thing that I learned a while ago is. This OG Jazzland label, which was an offshoot of Prestige. And then I learned some of these are, pre are pressed on recycled vinyl if they were at a certain period of time and how to identify them. And it's really made, I've come across these. But then what I've learned is like there's an AB in the dead wax, might be recycled vinyl, and they play noisy. You can't get them clean, even if they look really nice. Yeah. This one's very nice. It didn't have that. And um, I was I got it. And then sometimes you can tell there's little tiny sparklies in the dead wax that it might mm -hmm. be recycled vinyl. And this didn't have that. And this is like the first time I found this record. I did the inspection and things I learned. And I, I came home correct. And it's a good sounding record. Not a recycle, not pressed on recycled vinyl. So, mm. so there might be an A B in the dead wax. It, it was a pre I think is a pressing plant that that was known. That they that they pressed them on and cycle recycle vinyl, and that was for Jazzland only. I I don't know. I mean, this is just what I've learned. I like okay. a, a very it, it, it you, you know. Here's one suggestion I've been telling people: become friends with the record store owners because now when I go into these places, yeah, they have a box. Hey, I have a box. You want to look at it? And that's how I got most of these yesterday at one store. But yeah. one record store owner passed that bit of information on to me. I, you know, I'm learning. I didn't know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, yeah. our guy, uh, I think his name is Michael, down at uh, Vinyl, Vinyl Envy. Oh yeah, he's great, and his jazz is his thing. Oh, so, Michael, I mean, uh, yeah, he's a jazz guy. Yeah, so anytime we go down to Victoria, we can go there and say hi, you know, and. Well, I want to check out for jazz. You got to go to. Uh, you need to see. Um, Fascinating rhythm and Nanaimo. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah. a huge jazz yeah, section, and there's it looks to me like there's a lot of OGs yeah. sitting in there from big like McCoy Tyner, big names that uh, Rob would that have some cachet in the vinyl. Yeah, well, um, uh, you can try as hard as you want to coax me to come there. I'm just afraid I won't be able to make it back to my homeland if I come. <laughs> <laughs> my homeland. That's adorable. Uh, I love seam splits. I hate them. Can't stand seam splits. They're bad. Well, you don't listen to the seam splits. Uh oh, body fluids. We don't want that. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. now, uh, happy Saturday. All I just don't get all the phoning. Led Zeppelin is my third favorite band of all time. Uh, I don't get all the phoning over Zeppelin on the VC because they're power. They're a power band. Incredible. Well, uh, okay. Norman, okay. Norman. Ray, yeah, Ray. So added to the who is lukewarm. It's not lukewarm for me. I got a lot of who in the collection. Well, okay, Rachel. So I think for me, it's it's good to preface it. Who's your favorite band to listen to on vinyl? Different different than maybe your favorite band. Like I say, Jellyfish is my favorite band. But and people I think all I, yes. people think all I collect is jazz. But yeah. I do want to have all the Credence. I think Credence sounds excellent on vinyl. Yeah. They're very well recorded albums. They're good songs. Yeah. I don't I don't know anyone who really bashes Credence. You might not like them. I like but them. How I mean, to me, how does a guy from Northern California sound like he grew up in Louisiana or out something? in the bayou, yeah. Swamp rock. Yeah, but I think if you are a fan of vinyl and like listening to good music and the way vinyl makes it sound, you should get the Credence record. So also, I have all the doors. I feel that way. So maybe Led Zeppelin to me, I try and get all the Led Zeppelins, maybe three or four. And I put the Beatles more in a kind of mythological 
area. Yeah, the Beatles, the Fabs are all in a level all themselves. Okay, now, man, we're just teaching us how to work our records. Wait, are you gonna teach? Are you gonna teach us how to deal with an ingrown hair? Well, <laughs> this insert is the reason. I have this record. This is actually, I figured out which one had a crease in it. For 60 years ago today, this was released in America, um, th this record. so Very nice indeed. This is mono. Yes, this is one that is well-worn. So I do have some well-worn records. But considering it's 60 years old, uh, this is a thing of beauty except for now, that. You bought it. You bought it when you were 10 My years old? Nine years well, old. I didn't get it today because of the, on the on the actual day because my mother uh, worked at a department store. Uh, this was down in um, Menlo Park, actually Stanford University, Stanford Shopping Center. She worked at the Emporium department store, and I asked her to get it. And she brings back the Bugs, the the, the music of Liverpool. It's basically a copy band that that did the. Liverpool sound, the Mercy sound, wrong record, black and white cover. They're sitting on stools. They did it obviously to fool people who didn't know the difference. So she brings me back and she, and I said, that's not the Beatles. <laughs> so, so the next day she, when she went back, uh, she, she said, just keep that. And she brought, so I got this one tomorrow, 60 years ago. So there you go. And the rest is history. We wouldn't be, what, I wouldn't be here talking what, to you. What were you playing it on at home? Uh, I was playing it on my, my parents had one of those, I don't want, remember what brand it was, but it was not the Those long parents, console. It was a yeah, console, had, wooden console, had, but it yeah, was it the was. high kind of wooden console. You open it up, had a radio turntable on top, but like not taller than me, but it was pretty, you know, it was, it was like a high boy, uh, console, uh, console. So yeah, I, we, for we the, first, the, same time. the first 10 months I'd play my, uh, Beatles and chipmunks sings the Beatles records on the floor in the living room and eventually uh christmas 65 i think my parents got tired of me playing in the living room and gave me my first it was a magnavox pull down with speakers that folded down stacker and i had a mm. and, and beatles 65 that those came out so there we go and just All because right. you're talking right. about here this is a great comp this is the shangri-la's and oh, yeah and of, this is a good cd comp and of course we lost her Twice. Yeah, just uh, yesterday. Yeah. So, I mean, the Four girl groups were like in line with the Beatles at that time. You know, in terms yeah, of. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. A lot of fun. The leader of the pack. Rum, rum, rum. Was it, was there talking in that song? He did. Yeah. Know. Well, kind of. My friends were always putting him down. Yeah, down, but that now. Down, down, down. Down. Or is that walking in the rain? Some one of them had like, and he didn't. Well, know. which the walk in the rain that was the brother of ACDC? That walking in the rain? No, no. There's a I girl group song, yeah. or there's a girl group song where there's talking. Yeah, like, is, is that a thing? That was a thing. Like it's kind of like with the Everly Brothers. There's a one about, you know, would everyone who has family on flight six oh five please go to the chapel across the street? That's at the airport. You know, basically. The flight's late. There's a storm. Go to the trap chapel across the street, and we'll tell you what happened. <laughs> the plane fucking crashed. Remember, what do they call those songs that were all those like doom songs, rock and roll doom songs of 1960, yeah. 62? Wait, look out! Look out! Yeah. Uh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Goes muted. Um, I like the last kiss. Uh, Wednesday covered it. The little Canadian band that's, had a yeah, that's the only good song from uh, Pearl Jam. I like. Oh, I'm not a Pearl Jam person. These fuckers uh, made this album so big. I hate when they uh, miss size an album. Now what you're saying, Rachel, is, and it's not a euphemism. The Look album's too big for your. Thing. Look at that, this thing. Meaty, this beady, thing. big, and bouncy. Meaty, beady, yeah. big, and bouncy. That, that was like, only. That was only like a U.S. comp, right? It wasn't like originally. Yeah, it was like outtakes, alternate versions, single oh. things. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, okay, go ahead. I see. No, I see. Scotty's here. I'm going to finally. Um, now that I'm home and I'm, I'll do this soul tag, I'll probably record it today. I, I really wanted to do the soul tag, so. 
question for Massey. Um, I prefer Meet the Beatles, but I have introduced in the Beatles. And, um, you know, I don't remember if I actually got introduced in the Beatles before Meet the Beatles. I do not remember that. This is the uh, Half Speed Master on uh, Tommy's. I had an OG back in the day, once upon a lifetime. And then I got, this is great because I love the song Athena. Yeah. Uh, this when they stopped playing, uh, it was uh, Townsend had a crush on some gal at, you know, he was just nuts about her. Uh, and then this one, a uh, quick one on Polydor. So I like The Who, man. I dig The Who. They're a great band. I like The Who. But, you know, I don't... Uh, in fact, what's neat about this, or what's a little different about this one, this is actually a Japanese pressing, which is kind of wild. Rob is right. It's so weird that Fogarty had this sound like New Orleans, and he's from El Cerrito, California. Yeah. Well, yeah, I that's, mean, that's the whole thing, right? But that's the same. Like, Ry Cooter, Randy, Ry Cooter is from Santa Monica. Randy Newman's from Hollywood. And look at their voices. They're very soulfully kind of bluesy. Um, it's weird. Hey, Eddie, welcome to the TV show. It's a very relaxing. Hey, uh, no, hold on. Can everyone belatedly wish Eddie a happy birthday? It was his birthday the other day. Happy oh, birthday, no. Eddie. I had no idea. Yes. Happy belated. He turned yeah, 78. Eddie. Looks good for 78. So, well, and then, of course, I got, you know, like great assists. I got the 50, 50 greatest hits of the Who or whatever they call it. One, two, three. And I've got Tommy on CD as well. Compact right. disc. And I've got Who's Next on Compact Disc. This is a uh, later Canadian. Is that Freddy Krueger or is that Mazzy? Uh -oh. um, here's a question because I have three copies of Tommy's Who, the U.S. Is, yeah. is one preferred over the other? I have a DECA and then I have a Universal labeled. I would argue that earlier is better. And DECA sounds a little uh, different that you got on DECA label. Didn't DECA have uh, London or one of those as their well, the case of US DECA. Yeah. It's a U.S. DECA. That's a little different. All right. Put that there. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for wishing Eddie a happy birthday. Eddie, we love you. Eddie, did, what did you do for your birthday, Eddie? Did you pound your head? So the Who are fantastic. I like the Who. I love Tommy. Uh, my favorite, you know, the argument with Who fans, what's better, Quadrophenia or Tommy? I think Tommy by a long shot. Tommy, definitely Tommy. Definitely yeah. Tommy. So pound your head. Is that a new way that the kids call it these days, Waxed? Did you well, he likes metal. I grew up in the era of pounding your head. Oh, I thought you were talking about something but else. Figuratively and literally. I thought you kind of studied up since yesterday's debacle. Yeah. Uh, now, what the, that you mean on this stream? There were several debacles across yeah, the you, internet. No, you you won fair and square. You did the great job. Yes, I won. I I'll feel sit like alone I won. For, again. I'll continue to be alone. Yes. Well, Rob won the poll, but Anthony she picked Anthony. And yeah, then... Rob won the poll, but I think Anthony won. Oh, yeah, we could have all dressed up. Oh, we could have oh, all wait, wait. up. I I, didn't, oh, yeah. oh, hold on. I think well, we all you know. gotta make an effort, admittedly. To be, to be fair, Anthony you're won. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. I think we all won when Anthony won, don't you? I love I love the song Go to the Mirror. I love the overture. Uh, the beginning of Tommy. I like the song, Tommy, can you hear me? You know, the little acoustic so, thing. And the bass playing of John Entwistle and Tommy, a simple little three-chord song. Holy smoke, is that amazing. Hey, Entwistle makes that. Can I do this, Rachel? Yeah. Tommy. 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 Yeah, Tommy. 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 Um, Bill K. It'll, no, it'll, it's... It'll be the question, Massey. Did you, were you able to answer the question, Who do you? which one do you like better introducing the Beatles? Or meet the I Beatles. Said, I said meet the Beatles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I, a lot um, going on. Bill K., it's not a new fedora. It's, um, 
I've had this for a long time. I always bring it out when it starts raining a lot because it's, yeah. it's good in the he, rain. He, he always puts it on when he wants to invade teenagers' dreams uh, and murder yeah. them. Beetle Dave, you're welcome to join us if you're available. Certainly come on camera and we'll promote you. I know your people channel. like Rob Walker and others say, well, how come you wear a hat indoors? But it's kind of the persona when you're on screen. We talked about, you know, why why did Anthony dress up in the fireplace inside for a YouTube Beetle, thing? You know? and, uh, hold on. L listen, dress the way you want to dress. Don't let anyone bully you into dressing a certain way. Rob Walker looks like a 12-year-old boy in a grown man's body. They put the bowl on his head and they cut around and he Massey looks good cool. Yeah, it's not does he looks cool. Massey said he's a it's good genes. He's related to me, so it's understandable that he'd be deemed a good looking fella. Oh. Go ahead, Rob. Well, you're not family though. Massey's family is kinfolk. <laughs> well, 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 hold on. Hold on, on I haven't submitted to your DNA nonsense, so All you don't right. know how, what I have a relation to you. Well, I'm hopefully you're related. Maybe you'll be related to my sister. They're all from the eastern part of the Ukraine and all like you and whatnot. Go ahead, Norman. Can I do a CD minute? Yes, absolutely. I predicted this earlier in the show. Oh, oh, well, no, I I heard you say it. I heard you say it, Rob. So first of all, I'll start out with what I did a minute ago with the Shangri-Las. Yes. Uh, this is a very nice comp. This is like 33 songs on one CD. Who, who, put, like, who, put, songs that out? who put that out? This, this is, um, God, is this Koch? Hold on. Take you know, this, this, let me, the light is shitty right here. Yeah, you know, Rachel, normally we prepare when we're about to show. I know, right? it's just gone all awry. Please be patient with this final community. Massey is getting better lighting situation. Now, now Rachel, yes. I'd be more impressed. Any of your CDs uh, autographed to Mike, the mailman? Okay. Holy smokes. This is, uh, the label is RP RPM licensed. Uh -oh, sorry. By, I think it's licensed by Universal. This is, oh, this is part of Cherry Red, I think. Great comp. Steven yeah. Schnee, where is that CD from? Okay. Then uh, I played this. I haven't played this in a long time. This is their third and final album. Later, in 1992, they did one record television on Capitol Records. This is a great record. I forgot how good this is. It's obviously more uh, slicker, but I don't mean uh, than their first album, not as abrasive, but really well recorded, great songs. Uh, the vinyl for this goes for, I don't know, $250, $150 on up. Oh, wait, that's uh, the yeah. album they did in 92? 92, and this is it. Uh, but uh, this and I, this deserves, uh, if Capital still has the rights to it, Capital Universal should do a great version of this, not like the fuck up they did for Jellyfish. This deserves, now that there's talk of television, it's time for this. Um, and then... Before I go into those quad things, I ordered these because I did Terry Evans, um, <laughs> th he, three albums he did that were produced, and I didn't realize, by Joe Harley. And I think that w watching the Jazz Bums a few weeks ago, there was an album, I forgot what that label. Yeah, that's what I credit for your brother. That Terry, Terry Evans Harley. and Bobby King uh, performed oh, a long God. time with Ry Cooter. Ry Cooter's on both these records, produced by Joe Harley of Tom Pones. Tom, uh, poet fame now. Uh, one of these is on um, his label. What was the label that uh, Joe Harley had? Rob, uh, uh, jazz. It label? was Groove Note. No, not Groove Note. The other Groove one. Note is the ones he did a bunch of crap for. Yeah, really, really good. But this one is on Telar. Telar was is a digital recording. This really sounds good. Um, it, it's very kind of. Southern soulful rootsy, very Ry Cooter, but with like really great singing, really great. And then what Rob was referring to, out of the blue, and I okay, I'm a shill here. I don't. I, I out of the blue, I was sent these four new releases that were yesterday. The orders went up. They're called Quadio, and it's Rhino's new. Uh, not new. I guess they've been around for a couple of years. They do surround. Oh, I don't have a surround yeah. setup any longer. Like in your, you could listen to these. I think your your TV room has surround, uh, Rachel. Yeah. So you could play these and hear them in surround sound. I got uh, like yeah. Dolby and Dolby. Yeah, Atmos. you could do that. But they they sound just as good. I mean, they sound really good in two channel. So average white band. They did Randy Newman. Um, 
Is my minute up? I didn't realize I put it in no, the quarter. Sorry, the hold on for one second. The label you're looking for is Audio Quest. Mike's Audio uh, Quest. Thank you, Mike. That's what I was thinking of. Audio Quest. Um, Randy Newman, uh, Good Old Boys, Word, World is a Ghetto. And then this one, I'd never heard this, and this is excellent. Um, this Gil yeah. Evans record. I, Gil Evans, I said last night on the Jazz Wombs, Gil Evans had that touring orchestra band in the Billy Harper's on it. But yeah, there's and also Mazzy, there's some Japanese only records of that or that grouping. But those never are really good records. But I'd that, never but heard that, that vinyl of that's like seven dollars. You can get yeah. it every day. This is electronic. The only thing, this is what I hate about jewel cases. Look at that. That that's how it came, you know. Uh, and obviously I can't say, hey, can I get another copy? Because this was free. But um still jewel cases, I think, were the biggest, stupidest mistake ever, uh, would in my opinion, from CDs. I know people a lot of really CD fanatics hate those cardboard ones, but I'm fine with those personally. Hey, so, uh, uh, Matt, that's it. I want you. Can I show my friend Brad gave me some stuff they put out because I had asked him. Oh, there you go. There's no, no, no. Fan. no. Uh, this is really this this deserves a reissue because this this sounds amazing. So. Yeah, good band. Thank you. you. All right, what do so, you got? Uh, do you know who Terry Adams is, Mazzy? That sounds really familiar. Was he a synth uh, electronic oh, he was guy? A member, he was a member of NRBQ. Oh, yeah, this, I know who he is. Yeah. This was a solo album he put out in 95. Yeah. It, more jazzy. He had some Raw members and Roswell Rudd on it and NRBQ members. But this is a double album they put out last year. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, they put this out last year. This is Roger Manning from Jellyfish. This is an album he put out called Glamping. This came out last year. I've I've had the digital version of this. How is it? Very good. His solo stuff is very jellyfish-ish. Very good. And then, obviously, I got this for Harry. That's the Blood, Sweat, and Tears documentary. And all the all the music on here was is recorded from uh, the uh, the tour they did in you know in the Eastern Bloc nations in the seventies. It's really good. And the way they, I, I interviewed the director Mazzy. He also did the the United States versus John Lennon. He he said the way they found all the music is they contacted the producers. He passed away a family, and they had donated all the tapes and stuff that he had to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Library, and it was sitting in a box. They haven't. They didn't even. Cat, you know the. Archivist didn't even put in to categorize it. Is that know? a commie album? Looks like a commie album. Mazzy. It is a documentary that comes out next month about the story, how they, the State Department blackmailed Blood, Sweat, and Tears to do a tour of all the Eastern Romania and Poland. Oh, so and it's like, conspiracy shit. Yeah, it's real, it's really good really good documentary and this music sounds really good it's all live recordings so, so when was that recorded what year was that did that happen 71 72 okay. yeah but um i mean when the documentary comes out you'll you'll love it and um but this music has never been put out before so is that out yet yeah is that omnivore it came, it came out for record store day oh okay in november so this is for Harry. I got this for Harry. But uh, okay, here's the last thing. This uh, CD. Do you know who she is, Mazzy? Tanya Shen. Chen. Uh, oh, I know Thurston Moore and David True. I, so they did I this out al this album. They put out on CD. Electric music for piano. John Gage. It, it's John his, Cage. Is it John? John Cage? Cage. Oh, John Cage. Yeah, I know. So, oh, it's not. He's not on it. It's his music, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, John Cage is dead. Yeah, is that new? No, this is not new. So, when they originally put this out, they put out vinyl only to give away. They did a hundred copies. They did put out the CD of it. So the vinyl of this is kind of rare. If you ever try and find it, I don't think anyone's ever put it out for sale. <laughs> hey, uh, Kim, yeah, hold on. Mm. Oh, oh, look out, Kimbo! It's coming at you. Look out! Don't hey, listen. Where is my stuff? 
You know, I, I buy so much music, so getting a freebie here and there is, uh, I mean, you know, that's... that's. Yeah. You know what? If, if we share the same house and you're still alive by the end of that weekend, maybe I'll bring something for you. Oh, look at this. Uh -oh. Nice to him. All I said is you look like oh. a 12 year old. Your fashion Rob sense Walker, is seriously, oh Rob, I, you know, I'm going to slag you off like you slag us off, but seriously, I wish my heart goes out to you the loss of your kitten. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Come on, come on up a screen, Rob Walker. I bash you on screen. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, we don't make fun of that. I mean, you lost your. Yeah, when, uh, you know what? When Rob someone Walker, loses a pet, when someone loses a pet, that that's part of the family. So wait, wait, wait. Uh, His pet, my heart he goes out pet. to you. I'm not going to oh, say thoughts and prayers. Yeah, I, I don't didn't believe know in prayers, Sorry. but thoughts, thoughts Sorry, and Rob good Walker. vibes. I didn't know you. Your pet passed away. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Don't be an uh, asshole, uh, wax. It's over on the uh, well, all I said is he dresses like a 12 year old boy. That's it. <laughs> but I'm sorry his pet passed away. Yes. Uh anyway, Rob, yeah, I love what Mazzy said there. That's right. And what Rob said as well. Uh remember Wax has a fashion system. No, that's not true. He has a fashion system off your head. Yeah, you know, uh, uh Chris, I know you wear glasses. I don't know how thick they are, but how many eight year old boys have a goatee with gray hair in it? I mean, so, um, I'm excited supposedly today, but it looks like it might be had stuck on the way from Oregon through FedEx. Yeah. I'm getting my new cart cartridge. So I'm going to finally either this week or next week have my guy come over and I'll set up my uh, new turntable. The one I got the, the demo table that I got cheap, the P8, Rega P8. So, so that'll be a new, oh, very uh, nice, this new gears thing in two or three years since the Hegel. Very nice upgrade. Always fun to do, you know. Yeah. Improve the I don't do it very stuff. often, but once in a while. So. Uh, Brett Mouse, when you get a chance, I, uh, check out my room tour. It's uh, more creative stuff. I've done a music room tour. you got to check it out. It's a little different. A little different. See what you think. Maybe. It's, got, it's a little artsy. A little artsy. Maybe. Ooh, art, okay. Is it sort of the, is it a, a, a cinema experience? Was I think a, so. What do you think? So the, oh, yeah, the feedback's been very positive. Was, was the, the Mise en Scene by uh, Scusi's Ghost? Uh, Scusi did principal <clears throat> photography. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. But, you were but the director. I was the director. I kind of Rachel I figured was like, out. I want this shot. And I so you were, this you were set design. design. You did the look and the frame. You did the Mise en Stunty would be able to do the uh, the translation. <laughs> you know, the Mise en Scene is like the, the look of the frame of the Set. Yeah, I, I and I and I I, I said okay, I want to do this, and I think from there we'll cut to this, and we'll do this, and and it's because there's a lot of stuff in the room that people don't really get a you know kind of a bird's eye view on, or as intimate a close up view on as to what's all going on back in that shelving unit, et cetera. It's really mostly fun for us. It's mostly <laughs> fun for us. We, we had a lot of fun. And go, that's cool. Right. And, what, I, yeah. what I was not happy about is when we do the fly in. Yeah. There's still that. It stutters. It stutters. It's a YouTube thing. A YouTube I, I, thing. It's not YouTube like kind of buggers it. The, the actual filming is it's so just liquid. Smooth. It's liquid smooth. So I was really disappointed in that. And I don't know how to kind yeah. of. I want to fix that for next time because you watch. Uh, that, you know what the stuttering is? You can need to. Yeah. Yeah. Some YouTube videos will, will stutter. Uh, I mean, you, it doesn't lag. It's well, he'll tell you. Goes, go ahead. It's he knows a stutter, what and sometimes I've had it happen on some of my videos where you're moving. Um, it's something in the processing when YouTube process of, processes of moving videos. If you're moving, depending how quickly you're moving, it'll yeah. cause a stutter. And and I've been able to correct that. I've had it happen on a couple of my uploads. I deleted it and re-uploaded it, and sometimes that fixes it. Yeah. It's YouTube's processing of your video. That's what we yeah, figured because yeah, yeah. on the phone it's really smooth. Yeah, well, even the, the original. Did you film it on your phone? That's the thing, yeah, on the did on you, your computer. Where did you upload it from? From my uh, from my laptop. Oh, and what did you film it on? Uh, filmed it on my iPhone. Like all yeah. that stuff is great, and uh, on the film processor. Yeah, like the your, processor is clean, it's, it's smooth, really it's nice. better. Yeah, because the other thing you can do too is make sure you set your iPhone for 60 frames per yeah, second, yeah. not 30. 
We did. It's at 60. Massey, there's a record show tomorrow. I'm going to check, Thanks, text Dana. you the dates uh, or the time, says Dana. Uh, get us Kimbo and uh, let me know if you're interested. He yeah, says. is that it, Kimbo? Is I think that's the one at the um, at the not the food court, but at the. Uh, Can uh, you make your dating arrangements privately, please? Yeah, text text me the times and maybe I'll, I'll let you know. I think I can uh, do it. That's a really good question. James asks. We we have our own lingo here, and it, it, we get so used to saying stuff like VCLT, OGs, and stuff. OG stands for original gangster, which is a term you would have heard outside the confines of what we call the VC, the vinyl community. And an OG simply means a first pressing. It's like the big people, point. people think it should be OP original pressing, but it's an original. Okay. Yeah. It's original gangsta, well, we but original it, we borrow it from a from the OG from the hip hop subculture. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh. Oh. Wow. Okay. Uh, Wolfie. It's another, I, yeah. Another no, term no, where no. the white man steals uh, from uh, people of color—a term like we do for everything else. So. It's well, a I mean, that yeah. movie's kind of a propaganda film. So. Which movie? Uh, the Sound, Sound of Freedom. Of freedom. Sound of Freedom. Oh yeah, but I mean, for people on our side of the of the uh, political oh, divide, why can't we be on the Ray, same side? Hold, Rachel? hold on, why seriously, on Ray, Rachel, I'll explain it to you in a non-political way. That film comes out of faith-based films are not real movies because they don't do the things real movies do to be in, in form of motivation of creation and distribution to the to people who watch movies they're not made for pe movie goers they are made in a way they're definitely a money-making enterprise if you want to make money make a faith-based films but the way that they connect they do they're not directed towards movie goers for the that that reason the the uh the motivation to be to make a faith-based film is not really what movies are all about so that's why I said what I said. Has nothing to do. If you're into faith-based movies, more power to you. Do you love their message? Yes. But that film is a construct of, an literally construct of a true agenda. They're not. It's not directed to moviegoers. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, AGK. Welcome to TV show. You got Tim Hortons there. Got my Timmys. Yeah. Is my it a double double? Saturday morning decaf. Oh, decaf one. Oh. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Um, <clears throat> caffeinated coffee is not good. For me. Did you get to third base last night? <laughs> uh, wolf, wolf, baby. You. Uh, Home plate. If, if I Home promise plate. you, if that's what you take away from the film, more power to you. But the motivation behind making that film had nothing to do with any with anything you you think I'm saying. I, I, again, as someone who's worked with these people, it wasn't know, fact checked, and yeah. It, well, I don't know. A movie, yeah, yeah. hold on. Even if you think a movie is, even a documentary is not 100% of the truth, it's an edited story into a movie. That's with a all point of view. It's a, well, every movie's a point of view. The whole motivation into making a film like that. Is not it there is not directed at people who support and go to movies, moviegoers. Wow. Does AGK have donuts? I'm gonna die here. Uh nice donut. AGK's got a donut. Oh, don't hey, show the donut. Shangri Laws. Hey, Bill, those those um Yeah, those, yeah, yeah, great loss, huh? These guys were those great. carts, those optical carts are pretty amazing. I saw a few like I listened to a few. Yeah, this was the uh, this was the record store day uh, comp that came out a couple of years ago. The two LP. Yeah. What it's label all, is that? What label is that? Yeah, let me pull it. Yeah, and it's and it's all remastered. It sounds really, really good. Oh, does it's, it take uh, it take away the intent of the original artist? <laughs> and fun. Hey, Richie, good to see you here. What label is that? Redbird? Redbird. I've never heard of that. He's a redbird. He's a redbird. Yeah, yeah. Really good comp that came out on uh, Record Store Day. 
They did a really good job of that. Night when the yeah, wind all, is all five, still they got sleeps in the whole nine yards when they, yeah. they did yeah. That must yeah. sound great, Bill. I'm I'm answering Bill there. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really good, this album. Definitely a worthy pickup if you can still find a copy. Oh, what a shame you passed, man. 75 years oh. young. So the Shangri-Las are all gone. I mean, this is time moving on. I mean, that was such a standard song for growing up in the 60s. And uh, they were great. Shangri-Las were a lot of fun. What a has, a, has a nice biography. Have a, has a nice biography in it of the... Of the, of the Hang the, on, man. We'll show you there. No, we got like, you know. Yeah, fab, man. Yeah. Totally. It's sad. I mean, this is a toilet. That's such a cool. Like, that's such a cool showing those, that CD and record is turning into a conspiracy theory. I, I love that. that. Yeah. Is that a great photograph? Just I it's think. a killer photograph. Yeah. Yeah, Man. that is. Good. I like that the natural hair there, opposed to you. Remember that early '60s hair? You know. Yeah, I mean, the big font. Yeah. Not just the East Coast, but it seemed to be more East Coast that look. Yeah. Their the story, their the story, is kind of interesting. If you look at, if you read, beehive, yeah, you got the beehive. Wow. I wonder who started that. Fifth and I think Rachel should That's change your hair. To, to how, do now, realistically, yeah. how long? How long was their career? The Shangri Las. How long did they really? Probably have three a, years. Long? Yeah, um, I think this says the dates. Uh, Other than going on oldies cruises and reuniting. Yeah, just something. for your information. Yeah. Mazzy, the original, the first, the first recording. See, it's the best of the Redbird and Mercury Records. Redbird was the first label they were on. Oh, got it, got it. So they were on Mercury, yeah. And then they went Redbird and Mercury. Mercury. Anyway, um, I mean, it's sad to me, and we better get used to it because it's just going to be more and more as, a, you know, we're in the twilight of the time. If we ourselves make it. Okay, these go from 64 to 66. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, these go from. Um... So they came about when the Beatles landed in America, pretty much around that time, you know. Yeah, and it changed a lot, too. You know, I mean, the girl groups are going along. Then the Beatles covered them all, uh, some of them anyway. Yeah, uh -oh. see, these, go, these go to 67 and six, nine, April 3rd, 1967 would be their last appearance yeah well by that time they're yeah by that time they're they're out of fashion that sound was gone, but, yeah. Yeah. yeah but they were Be great quiet. in their time they were so good in their time all those girl groups like that you know and you know people like the corettes are are, are a band that's reviving yeah. that sound so that's Even why the ronettes and all the phil specter that sound i mean he he went in a different direction after that with the righteous brothers and stuff like that but um Oh yeah, uh, say what you will about Phil Sex Spectre, yeah. but come on. the Motown thing lasted. The crystals, the crystals, Arlene Love, all those guys, fantastic stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and Bruce helped help bring back um like Ronnie Spectre and stuff, uh when he did yeah. and, and Southside Johnny when they did uh duets with uh, no, uh, uh Gary US Gary US yeah. Bond. Springsteen brought that, I think produced or yeah. brought that. Gary U.S. Bond. No, he covering, wrote, he, they wrote his whole album. He was covering um, the big hit. Yeah. One well, you didn't mention, which this is this is a must-have for anybody who likes the Who. That's a good because this has probably got some of their best live performances ever. That's played. a good comp. Yeah, good. It is. The, 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 the final tracks, you know, the I won't get fooled again and Bab O'Reilly on here uh, at, recorded uh, live at Shepperton Studios. Man, the the best version you'll ever hear of those songs for sure. And of course, you got the Smothers Brothers, uh, my generation on here. That's this where he. A, that's where he lost his hearing. His, hear, his hearing went yeah. bad in that performance. Yes, yeah. that's right. And I and I'm sorry. I take I take Quadrophenia over Tommy. Yeah. This is loaded. Net, loaded over. Basically, like, that is like the wall for Pink Floyd. Too much. Uh, the wall for Pink Floyd for me is. Ugh. Tommy's got uh, Tommy's got more pop, more pop in it than yeah. Uh, yeah Tommy's, I Tommy's more pop. I like I, I, Tommy... I like the deep deep. I mean, I had Tommy. Tommy was my first Who record I ever owned, and I still have my original first press of Tommy. It was the first Who record I had. But when Quadrophenia came out, I just dug it so much because it was a lot deeper. I think it was a lot deeper album than Tommy. 
Well, Tommy was a, a concept album. Uh, they both were, I guess, on some Two different level. types, of course. Tommy's about, uh, you know, Def blind, Blum, guy, Def Blum Def blind guy overcoming, blah, blah, blah. Whereas Quadrophenia is a slow dive into the abyss for this the character. I heard, yeah, I heard the thing about Tommy was that... Uh, the the money the money for it the guy goes listen you do uh, this thing make it about a pinball and i'm going to throw a wad of money at you the guy apparently the producer loved uh, or somebody one of the guys in the money chain loved pinball he was into pinball and so they made him a pinball wizard and you that's know, why they did the whole pinball thing you why should that watch comes into it. rachel you should watch a documentary lambert and stamp Lambert wow. and Stamp yeah. were the managers, uh, and Lambert produced Tommy. They managed The Who, and then they started track records with Jimi Hendrix and yeah. Arthur Brown. That's a great documentary. on. It favors The Who, but Lambert and Stamp, these two posh yeah. guys that started managing it, The Who. Yeah, is it Christopher Stamp, the brother of Terrence Stamp, the yeah. actor, yeah. is who he is? And uh, he was a mover and a shaker in London during that period yeah. of time, and uh, so they were they were high profile. The documentary they had no so record business, right um, up my alley. yeah. And then Lambert produced and really pushed Pete Townsend and putting together Tommy. I mean, what was it uh, What's the what's the documentary called? Terrence, uh, 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 I just said it. Lambert and st either Lambert. Stamp and Lambert or Lambert and Stamp. Yeah, okay. I've Lambert seen so many documentaries. I mean, like I've read and watched some stuff about them because I know that he's the brother of uh, Terrence Stamp, the actor. And they were high profile at the time. Movers and Shakers in London. See, kind of like uh, Oldham uh, when he was running around with the Rolling Stones. Uh, you know, there's these background players that uh, had a Susie, lot of... Uh, it's, this there is you go, Lambert and Stamp. Okay. okay. Great documentary. I wrote it down because we tend to forget, and then we're like, yeah. we're trying to remember a movie that someone suggested oh, for us. Yeah, watch. somebody said there's like a Criterion type series that's available on YouTube, and they said it, it's high end. Get, I don't have this. I should get this. It's probably cheap, you know, too. Yeah, they don't go for a whole lot. I wrote it down somewhere, but now I can't find it. So. Anyway, somebody was telling us about three weeks ago about, <laughs> oh, there's this killer series, and it's all available. On, on YouTube, YouTube, and it's by this director. Go check this guy's stuff out. Uh, it was in one of our when we we're talking more about movies, one of those yeah. episodes. I can't remember what it was. Uh, okay, wow, Wolfie Baby. I go to a record show in Jersey. I was told by a vendor that he uh, rebought some of Southside albums. Uh, yeah. the Johnny is usually there at table selling, but it's unrecognized. Southside Johnny, look at nine dollars. Oh, in America, $9. I'm going to order it. $9. I mean, okay, well, I'll see what it is up here. Wow, that is crazy. $9. Now I'm curious. What do us Canadians get? Well, we're paying a lot more, man. We're paying 27 bucks for it, Blu-ray up here. It's worth actually ordering it from uh, the U.S., and then even with the you know the tax and everything, it still come out as being cheaper. Uh, more buying choice is down to thirteen dollars and eighty eight cents. So if you that's on Prime. But you know is what that, you know what you know what Amazon's starting to do though, and they've been doing it for the last few years, is yeah. if a movie or something or or a vinyl album is available on the Canadian um, Amazon store, they won't let you buy the American version. They won't oh. ship it. They'll give you a yeah. can. They want you to buy it from the Canadian distributor. Yeah, but they yeah. like they're like the book industry in Canada is very protective mm -hmm. of, of stuff like that, right? Yeah. So, because I have a U.S. Amazon account, and I've tried, and then recent years I've tried to buy some, you know, vinyl or DVDs or whatever because they're not on listed on the Canadian one, or they're cheaper even with the conversion. They're cheaper. Um, because Amazon Prime doesn't want to ship to Canada because they lose money, right? Because when you have free shipping with Amazon Prime, they don't want to ship it to Canada because it's, you know, it's costing them money. So, yeah, Amazon is kind of like forcing Canadian buyers to buy from Canada Amazon now. Uh, well, and US, yeah. like US yeah. Amazon is forcing Canadian I mean, it buyers. It helps Canada by when you buy and it's like buying in state. It's like people in Washington state, a lot of people for big 
big ticket items will drive to Oregon because there's no sales tax. You can't buy a but car you know, there. Funny, funny about it all, though, I've been buying a lot of Aero uh, Blu-rays, you know, Aero Company Blu-rays, and yeah. a lot of them buy them on the Canada Amazon yeah. because you know for good prices. And when I right. see the ship, when it goes, it's shipped, and I see the tracking, it's coming out of like Pittsburgh or <laughs> they're still shipping them up from the U.S. So yeah. it's, it's really kind kind of stupid what they're doing. Yeah, if I want to get something, I haven't bought anything expensive, but I have my son in Portland order it. Next time I go visit him, just grab it because I mean, right. if, it, if I bought Rachel, something, out Rachel, is this some um, some sort of Eastern Bloc hooker uh, speaking to me or something? Uh, Wick says, uh, Wick's big Shangri La is talking. I was when I say I love you bad, I believe I'm in love. I love you. Well, what, uh, can you decipher that for me, please? Not uh, hope in hell, but you know, the point is, it's a forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, I believe William is trying to poke the bear today. William, don't park, poke the bear. Uh, Edge is going to start wearing a suit regularly. Leave Edge and get alone, William. He's doing good. Don't poke the bear. Yeah. Uh, today, I have no filter. Yesterday, I was polite because the ladies were there. Yes. We yeah. cannot but Rachel, Rachel's not a lady, so I have no problem having no mm. filter. <laughs> if but, you, well, hey, where do we go to see oh, AGK I'm after good. dark? That's my question. <laughs> but going back to John's question about the Who vis a vis Led Zeppelin. The Zeppelin's my number three band, but I love the the Who. The Who was certainly I knew who they were a long, long time ago, a lifetime. I knew who the Who were in the nineteen sixties. Tommy made a big wave even for little kids like me. I was like ten years old in sixty eight. William, there's only one bear here. <coughs> wow. Yeah, that's Johnny. Yeah, Johnny's the bear. bear. Hey, uh, William, do you want a speed date with a bear? That's the question. Oh. What if I am a bear? Well, holy smokes. Yeah, well, hold on. William, you're allowed to read your comment before you hit send. Oh, because, <laughs> Rachel, will you, Rachel, will you explain to William what a bear is? Oh, William, I oh, want William. Nick Rudeau to explain it. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's above my pay grade. Okay, I'm still not clear as to why HEK thinks Amazon Prime will not ship to Canada. HEK, ship to Canada. We don't know. Yeah, no, but HEK is going to answer it. No, I'm saying Amazon US won't ship to Canada because of the um, you could, when you have a Prime uh, account, it means you pay nothing for shipping. Shipping's free with Prime. Well, it's so, not because you pay an annual fee. It's round, bundled up in yeah, your annual. Yeah, but annual, but don't forget the annual fee. The annual fee is only a hundred dollars Canadian, which gives you all your ship, free shipping for the year. It gives you Prime Video. It gives you Prime Music. It's a bargain. It, it's nothing. It's peanuts. Yeah, it's still it's a bargain, but there's still items that are, if they're prime, they're way more than the items that aren't prime. I mean, it's like the shipping's put in there somehow. Well, no, so, but the point, the point is, also, is the U.S. won't ship to Canada because of the shipping costs. Yeah, Simple well, as no, that. If you're a prime member and have free shipping, they're not going to ship it to Canada because we have to pay for the shipping. Because it costs them a lot more to ship to Canada, right? I mean, shipping locally. You won't get Prime if you order out of country. Well, like if wait, I order well, let's, from let's Germany, or, Amazon if I order has Amazon through the UK, I don't get free shipping. Yeah, but I mean, am, all, but yeah. Amazon um, has affiliates too, so not everything on Amazon is part of Prime. Exactly. Shipping. Some of them are third party. Some of them yes. are third party affiliates. Yes. Okay, this is the, the wrong album my mother bought. You can see somebody's mother in 1964 not knowing the difference. Look at that. The Bugs, the original Liverpool sound recorded in England. Come on, I was trying to go after this. Wasn't that the band The Flintstones? <laughs> no. You know, everybody loves The Bugs. The <laughs> The Bugs of Beatles. That's the Flintstone band. <laughs> I want to hold your hand by the Bugs. But it does have a uh, Teddy Boy Stomp, Soho Mash. She loves you, Liverpool. Oh, this this would be good for you, Rachel. It has Liverpool drag. I don't know. I think I got it, Massey. <laughs> this the one. Should I, should I get this one? Yeah, London Town Swing. Yeah. Actually, uh, K K. Uh, what's it? K R W D here in Toronto. Amazon uses local couriers to ship everything, and they also use Canada Post. 
um, they don't have their own shipping. They use a, a number of different local courier companies Stunty, with very Stunty. varying quality in the shipping practices. I think they will, but you. I think what he's talking about, if you're a Prime member, you pay once a year and you get the TV thing and you get free shipping. Your Prime does not work out of country. I think I think they will ship. I don't know. I can order something from Canada. Well, because you can, you can take, you know what I've done? And I've, try, I've done. But you got to pay for the shipping. You can take the 30 day free trial from the US uh, Amazon, right? And then just cancel it. And they still won't ship to Canada. But they won't. They, you, when you put it in the cart and you hit to go to do the checkout, it'll say, doesn't this, this will not ship to your country. Well, well, wait a second, Anthony. Are you strictly talking about albums or have you tried to order like so? Tried, like most of the stuff, I haven't done albums. I've done the odd album, but most of the time it's like DVDs and Blu rays and stuff. What I did order was it the has, Alfred Hitchcock. Maybe it has something to do with regional something. With, hey, I got John Alfred Hitchcock from the UK and saved money. John Pyle. Wait, let me answer John. That's not totally true because um, Jose in Mexico ordered, uh, he ordered Sergeant Pepper and he was able to get, the, they sent him Sergeant Pepper and Mono about a year ago. So he was able, they had a, like a, some copies left of Sergeant Pepper in Mono. So they do have some records there at Mexico. Uh, Fantastic. Amazon. Oh my God. Hello, Cesar. Good morning to you. But Welcome maybe to not show. in store, Mazzy. Like maybe you can't go into Walmart and get anything. Yeah, Prime is Prime is only with stuff. Prime is only with stuff that Amazon's shipping to you. It's not has nothing to do right. with their third right. dollar. Exactly. Or if yeah, exactly. Because I order a lot of stuff through Amazon, but that's coming from um, third parties. Uh, Chauncey, uh, Cha Chauncey's records is coming from uh, Rare Waves. A lot of well, great right. stuff. Well, unless unless you, Amazon houses the product. Well, well, well let me let me give you a little by, hold on. Let me give you a slant on this. By Amazon. I, I what I do know is like the Canadian book industry is very protective. It, in my mind, it, Amazon wouldn't be allowed to ship like a book from the US to Canada for that reason. Copyright laws. Yeah, that's that, why I'm thinking maybe on the Blu-rays and DVDs too. Maybe that has something to do with Blu-ray. I think DVD. you know it's not that the um, the whole idea it, of free trade only benefited the certain people and the little people. The re the average citizen, both in Canada, the U.S., and everywhere else, never got the benefits of free trade. We're still paying through the eye sockets exactly. for everything. Uh, like I said, it's a per item thing. I've run into it. I'm not saying it happened 100 percent of the time for me, but I have run into that situation where. U.S. Amazon just won't ship here. Just says, sorry, we cannot ship to your location. I, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I've got, right. a, I've got a U.S. Amazon account. But, you yeah, know, I don't use that Amazon account. Got a Canadian but I've, Amazon. I've ordered albums from uh, Amazon UK that I can't get in the U.S. I've done that. Yeah, so. I've got a U.K. Amazon account, too, as well. So, so okay, but I don't. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, okay. Now, now, hold on. Now, Stunty. Are you antagonizing AGK with all this, or do you or do you want to leave him alone? What's going on, um, Mazzy? I don't. Stunty's on a tear for AGK to make he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just I didn't okay. realize. Moving along, moving the fuck along. Here we go. Thank well, you. <laughs> okay, here's the other thing. Now I got an upset uh, record hound on my hands here. Oh well, good morning. Anyway. He simply asked the question up here, why won't Walmart sell vinyl to Canadians? They do. Walmart, Some you can get some select titles. They tried vinyl for about a heartbeat in some Walmart stores. It didn't work out for them. It was like Target failed in Canada as well, and they just killed it. So there was a period of time where you could go in and find a small selection of vinyl. Well, yeah, vinyl apparently... Was, Hang on, Anthony. London Drugs in Canada does sell vinyl. So if you want vinyl store bought other than the proprietary uh, independent record store, you can go to a um, London Drugs and you can buy vinyl in, in a number of vinyl. Not every London Drugs, but a number of them. So, But London Drugs is only in Western Canada. Well, and as far as Walmart goes, the answer was they did a little bit. They well, tried Walmart, it. It didn't work. Walmart apparently still sell in Alberta and Saskatchewan because uh, they're small, you know, just because 
they don't have the big metropolises. But Walmart's Toronto never got. We never got vinyl for, even for a second here in Walmart's in Toronto. Not even for a second. Yeah, and out here that our Walmart did like you can get Taylor Swift and you can get some cowboy records of a couple of select country records I've seen. Hey, sister, this is my big sister, Maureen. How you doing, lovely? Good to see Maureen in the house. Uh, and uh, Dead Wax saying hello to our good friend, AGK. Not upset at all. Okay, well, that's good. I don't want you upset. I have my eye on you, Darren. I want to make morning, sure you're Dead Wax. Good morning. Because when you go, oh, well, good morning, it makes me think, oh, shit, he's, he's, I, he's feeling maybe slighted or ignored or something. And I don't want that to happen to you. So I'm glad you're doing well with that. And that you're not upset at all. This is a good thing. Folks, we got 156 watching now. Please give us a thumbs up. It does help us promote the channel. Get us out there into the world of YouTube. They find that we got a TV show running. So that's a good thing. I'll do a quick refresh, see what we're looking at number-wise. Uh, good. Thank you so much. They're starting to come in now. We appreciate it. Folks, big news in the vinyl community right now. I want to thank everybody who's responding so well to this. My buddy Renee is continuing to grow. He is at 918 subscribers. He's on the verge of hitting his first thousand. It's such a milestone for all of us. And uh, Renee, we love you. We are hoping for good, good things. Sue, could I trouble you for another coffee, or would you prefer that I go get it? I can do that. We don't have any more coffee. Okay, we're out. Then it's fine. That's do fine. you want me to make you a, a latte? I have cappuccino? a latte. Thank hey, you. Rachel, I have leftover grounds. I can run them through a dirty sock. For you know what? It was? I would love I don't that raw. should have three cups. Of I think coffee. you know what it was. Maureen just mentioned coffee, and I, I go, I that like sounded that. so good. You know. know. Uh, okay, I'm 64 this morning, and the thumbs up. Oh, there okay. A is, is happy, there a, birthday. happy birthday! Happy hey, birthday, there, Bill! You, is you there a coffee like bean? Older, is there a coffee bean shortage in Canada right now going on? No, well, know. apparently, no. apparently, coffee Amazon coffee. won't ship to Canada of coffee. <laughs> I went to the I grocery people, store oh, yes, yeah. yesterday. The grocery store with my daughter to buy a new can of coffee, okay. and and for a can of coffee now here, yeah, it's ridiculous. We just looked at each other and said, "Fuck this," because. It's cheaper just to go to Tim Hortons. A can of coffee grounds for your yep. house is twenty-five to thirty-five dollars. Whoa! I wonder because I wonder what it's doing out here. The, you know, the it's for a while. That's ridiculous. What happened? Proper oh, size. Twenty-five for a can of coffee. What that is? was freaking Maxwell House. That was freaking Maxwell House. That's what about so Amazon? What about uh? You don't go to Costco or anything like that? No, I because you know they I'm on a membership and. And for me and just my daughter, everything's in bulk. I can't use all the shit that, you know. I buy, I buy, my, big. I buy coffee at Costco. Costco does okay. everything big. You have to buy in big quantities. Not practical okay. for a person. Okay, AJK, here's how you get your coffee from now on. If you're telling me the truth. I mean, look at this, Anthony. So here you go. Maxwell's 1067 Instacart, uh, DoorDash, Walmart 997. It's cheaper. Yeah, I'm just saying we were at the grocery store and we were shocked when we went to the grocery I would store. order it. I would go online and buy it for uh, that kind of you know where my you know where <coughs> I used to shipping. <laughs> when my parents no, lived in Amazon. Oh, okay. I don't know if you know the um I can't remember the name of it. It was a coffee company in British Columbia in, in on the island there where you guys live that my parents yeah. used to order their coffee beans from. It came from another island. Oh wow. island. Look at this. Salt you know Spring. the one I'm thinking of? You know the one I'm yeah. thinking of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salt Spring Island Coffee. Salt Spring, yes, yes. Salt Spring Coffee Company. My parents used to always buy their coffee from them. They'd oh, beans. my God. My dad would grind his coffee every morning. He would grind the coffee from the beans every okay, morning. Okay, here's what you do. They want 25 bucks. Put them out of business. Put them the fuck out of business. Amazon Choice Maxwell House, eight ninety nine on Prime through Amazon know, Prime. Deliver it tomorrow. But I mean, Maxwell House is like the bottom of the barrel in coffee, really. I mean, yeah. we wanted, we were I looking know. at like better stuff like President's Choice, and it was just, it was even beyond. It was just ridiculous. You couldn't get President's Choice less than thirty bucks. It was crazy for the, you know, for the Big Ten. I got to look for Folgers. This is the best brand, you know. Of course, obviously, the poor Abigail Folger in the Manson murders. You was the heiress of Folgers. Yeah, 
Groceries in Toronto right now are out of control. Um, oh my God, Sue! So. Classic roast, eight ninety seven through Prime. Oh, that's what we're gonna do now. Ra Rachel, Rachel, I think I found the deep rooted issue that AGK has against Maxwell House. Okay, let's uh, take a look at uh, Rob. Uh, so when uh -oh. AG, I'm, this is all hypothesizing. Yeah. When AGK was a kid, he was really scared by the Wicked Witch in um, Wizard Claire. of Oz. Rachel. Yes, Sorry. Rob. She became the spokesperson for Max. Oh, I remember her. <laughs> she <Yeah. was> <laughs> that is great. I love that. That's that great. is the he is having like oh. deep. Wait a minute, wasn't that Ruth Ann? Wasn't that Ruth Ann? Oh no, not Ruth Ann. Ruth not Ann, so young and beautiful, and not that. Grandma only drank Maxwell House Rage. That's my granny. She was a Maxwell House lady. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, Hamilton, get, Nova Scotia. To get like a premium brand of coffee, it was just ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous money in the grocery stores. And it's wow. a big problem in Toronto right now that the grocery stores are way over overinflated in pricing. Wow. Now, it's a big now, problem. Oh, okay. when you went when you went Thanks, to, Biden. Uh, doesn't Tim Horton sell bag coffee? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Tim Hortons, Tim Hortons was up in the twenties too for their no, freaking. Oh, Tim Hortons is too expensive to buy. Tim Hortons, any of the okay, uh, let me go see. Thing, like, I go to the drive-thru. <laughs> the the one time a week, I get I have a cup of coffee on Saturday mornings. That's it. I'm not going to pay you know twenty bucks to to have a okay, cup Tim of coffee. Tim Hortons is available online, but you are paying more. You're paying you, you know there's, there's a there's a few oh, luxuries right. in life. If you're a, I pay more for beans because there's a few luxuries in life. I get yeah. If I buy local, I get Coffee Julie. Uh, their cafes have Herkimer, which is a local Finney Ridge uh, bean, which is a kind of a mid roast, which I like a lot. If I splurge four times a year, or I'm in San Francisco, I get um, Grafeo, which is a dark roast, and it's all Italian dark roast. Uh, they came from the, Italy in the 1960s in North Beach, and they've been roasting, and that's my favorite. I, so. Every morning, I grind but my own cheap. beans. I grind my own beans both figuratively and literally here. So we got to do some uh, merch for you. What? For me? Angelo. Uh, well, read the comment. Oh. Oh. You, just, you know, it's like, you know, uh, Randy, it's like if somebody likes a certain scotch or a certain wine or a certain beer, you know, you like what you like and, you know. You you figure out where you spurt, you know. So uh, Tom Petty nice. was obsessed with Maxwell House. That's from Daz. That's I did not know that Dazzle Chefs. Listen to Maz. Listen to Massey. He knows he is what's called a yuppie. <coughs> Renee, yeah. I thought, uh, or Johnny goes. I thought Renee was coming. I hope he's okay. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Johnny, why are, are you not coming up to say hi to me? <coughs> Johnny, You're what's going on with Johnny? Johnny? Johnny, listen, he's don't. Shining. Okay, Johnny, don't be worried. Your channel's still good. You're you got a great channel. Please subscribe to Johnny. You're still doing good and growing, and everything. Yeah. Um, but I mean, right now the story is my buddy Renee. He's just. Thank you, whoever it was in the peanut gallery. Thank you for subscribing. We got another uh, sub just now in for uh, my buddy Renee, and I'm so grateful for the support for these young channels that are starting out and uh, really building their brand. Yeah, uh, Renee's an hour late. He's yeah, an hour late. Uh, Maxwell House. Uh, yeah, because it's like, Maxwell House often on sale at Food Basics for nine bucks. That's you know, sometimes you can get nine dollars for a uh, Pete. Pete's dark roast. Pete's French Ray, roast. In the dark. Ray, can I, Rachel? Can I say? Can you make me big so I can oh, address the public? Absolutely, Rob. Can you look what when we put our heads together as a group here? See what we did. We helped yeah. AGK out, not spend twenty five dollars for a can of coffee when you can get it yeah. for eight ninety nine. We did it. We did it. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing uh, what we can accomplish. If we you put our, what? it's the war something? effort. Go can ahead. I say something? Yeah, do. It takes a village. It takes a village. Final commander. I mean, I am very hot right now. Holy smokes. Things are going so good right you know, now. Alex Costco's uh, beans are good too. I think they're um, Pete's. They used to be Pete's for a while. No, they did Starbucks for a while. They, but I think but they sell Pete. Pete. It depends what they get in. They'll do Pete's. Yeah. They'll do Starbucks. 
they did there's a san francisco coffee company they do and not all starbucks is equal because they have their um their roastery beans that are better than the beans that the average starbucks okay look what's happening to hk tim horton's original 24.99 each Hey, so that, uh, uh, why right. why don't we all chip in? And that's and at no frills. That's at no frills. That's our discount. Oh, wow. Yeah. So right. Let's all let's all chip in together and get. Can we all chip in and get AGK that coffee that the jungle cat shit out of their butt? Civics? Rob, do you have any advice for Johnny to help his channel grow? Um, uh, <laughs> put his face tattoo. That always seems to work for people. Put a face tattoo, well, John Johnny Day. Al. Yeah. I have an idea for Johnny Al. He okay. could advertise on his, you know, there's lots of space there. What? If Johnny Al could, you know, advertise. What? On his head? <laughs> yeah, he's oh. got a face up there. Oh, that she just so said horrible. you had a big forehead, Johnny. That is horrible. <laughs> Johnny, I'm so sorry that Sue attacked you. I will I will <laughs> block attacking. her. I'm just You're going to be blocked. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a, to say a bag of the poop coffee. <laughs> sorry, Johnny. <laughs> Holy smokes! Uh, it's, only, nope. it's only it's only two dollars. It's only a dollar yeah. fifty for a for a you large. Know, <laughs> so the best know. thing is to invest, and in, you can invest in a cheap grinder. And even if you get cheap, get beans because they'll be they'll be it'll taste better if you grind your own beans. I, yeah. I know people are lazy, but actually, my daughter my daughter's been bugging me to get one of those Tasmo things or whatever you know that you put the pods in. She's been no, bugging me. Don't, don't get those. Don't okay, get hang those. on. Let Sue okay. go. Go ahead. I'm for a sorry already because I always feel bad. When go I ahead. Do it. I am. I'm, I have to say sorry because I always feel bad when I make a joke. But I can only say it because I was bald too, Johnny. Okay? Yeah, she was a good bald girl. Yeah, but, did you, but Sue, did you sell advertising on your forehead? That's the big well, thought about it. Okay, folks. So Sarah has uh, created a video. Uh, 20 subs so far. Let me go. So, so sorry, let me make sure I'm sub to you. Hang on. I so should have put to sub to Rachel's ghost on my forehead. On my good head. god. Hang on, so sorry. I'm going to your channel and I'll promote you too. I am subscribed. Now, what's this? Okay, 20 subscribers more, but if there's no content, that you don't have any content, Cesar. What is going on? Look at this. Well, if you uh, Hey, don't, always, don't subscribe to people without content. That, no, hey, he, never... apparently he made a video, but he's deleted it. Hey, Cesar, here's what you do. Go to the grocery store and just shoot what? a video the of the coffee. The channel doesn't have any content. Can you shoot? Cesar. You could become the coffee guy. Just shoot content of coffee. <laughs> you can be coffee Cesar. The coffee Cesar, yeah. It's not me. You know, I'm freezing. She's hot. I'm freezing. She's blowing the. She's doing one of this, you know, this kind of thing, and I'm getting waves of cold air coming. Oh, sorry over. about that. Horrible. Sw I'll uh, switch hands. Okay, uh, so sorry you didn't link your video correctly. You direct link people to it, but didn't list it. Uh, okay, uh, Rachel enjoyed your 2024 room tour. The producer, great job documenting all your music. Yeah, Sue did all the camera work. Uh, it was under my, you know, artistic Tutelage. vision. You're, my you artistic your, vision. Yeah. You're a director. I'm the director. Absolutely. Let me fix it, Rach. Thank you, Cesar. Rachel, I can see the Cesar video. Well, uh, you know, I wish I could. <laughs> I'm still standing. I'm still standing, Dr. 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 Frankenstein. Dr. Van Helsing. I got nothing, man. I see nothing. Van Helsing. Uh, but that line is from uh, Dr. That's not Van Helsing. That is uh, from uh, Young Frankenstein, yeah. that line. I'm still standing. Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah, Van, Dr. Frankenstein. What was the first channel in the VC that you all subscribed to? I'm going to say either uh, Joe Mayo or Larry Graves, the Canadian Stead Muffin. It would have been one of those two guys. Because of their love of the Beatles, uh, I would have come in like that. Maybe Cesar blocked me. That could be it, Chris. I'm blocked by Cesar. Is there, is there a way to look up to see who you did? Subscribe yeah, to? I got nothing. I see nothing. Videos. No, I got nothing. I, could I, I Rachel, I've actually met Cesar in person. So I yeah. he's a real person. I've met him. Well, I, you know, all I'm saying, you know, oh, I'm not yeah. saying I'm big as a person or a thing. He was or my whatever boyfriend. it is. Holy shit, I'm going up against B sides. 
holy shit she's taking me on this could be the end of my channel right here this could be the end of it okay check now vinyl community all right Cesar, hang on whoops hang on jesus uh let's go here okay, renee i'm so on the renee watch right now his channel's just going ballistic yeah i wish you paid this that much attention to me as you're paying to renee i love you but you, you rob you're in with the jasmine some big channels and all that okay so cesar what is happening with cesar <laughs> at this point in his career go to channel yeah, when I go to the channel, I see nothing, but that link could probably get me there. But man, yeah, I, can, I don't know why. Yeah, here's the link to the channel. Is it unlisted or something? But when I go to your actual channel, I can't see. Here's the link. Okay. Well, you just put the link. I don't need to put it up. There it is. It's our 23 subscribers. But when I go to videos or home, I got nothing to visualize. I can only see it through that direct link. Why is that? Let me know in the comments below, Vinyl Community. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's got a, he's got a, oh no, that's not, wait. He just made it public. Okay. He's go got John public. Oliver. Oh, he's, I guess he got, are these people he likes? What's going on here? Like I don't know. channel has no videos. Yeah, we, Sue and I see nothing oh, when we go there. Oh, here it is now. I refreshed. Okay. Okay, he's got two. Okay, so it's got to be in because of Just the Just go cash. refresh and uh, refresh it. He'll be there. Oh, there they are. Okay, we got them now. We got them. First video, favorite Spanish rock. Oh, Renee's looking for a link. Okay, hang on, Renee. We'll get you up here. Uh, I love it when we got the big channels up here like yeah, us. I tell you, I, I clearly I'm work. Clearly, working uh, or making videos means nothing anymore. <laughs> Anthony, what, don't be a spoiler for it just because Renee is better than you at did, doing videos. And stuff. I'm not going to make videos anymore. It's as simple oh, as he's that. Called, like, like, I, Anthony, why can't you be more now. like Johnny? Johnny doesn't sweat this stuff, right, Rob? I think, Rachel, you're starting a whole big to do. It's not a competition. Yeah. Oh, like you get the, some people get insecure. Hi, Renee. Welcome, Hi. To the channel, Hi, buddy. Woo! So, welcome aboard, big channel. Be a big channel. How many I got now? Okay, well, let's take a look, Renee. I'll go out there and get an updated look. Uh, it's just because we've really been promoting it. Nine hundred and twenty-four. I am hoping that awesome. maybe tomorrow or maybe later today you might hit the thousand. It's a big mark. Yeah, before. Go, but anyway, I'm happy. Um, I this love that you got the camera fixed on your video presentations too, buddy. That was yeah. really good. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, okay, go ahead, Renee. I got a. I I went to get a few records. Yeah. So if you give me the big screen, I will. Yes, show absolutely, you. sir. Yeah. You were like you were like this, John Lennon. Imagine. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I finally bought it. Okay. Started off my John Lennon uh, collection. Okay, so you're just now getting your John Lennon's going. Yeah. Okay, flip it around the other side there, Renee. There's the front of it. That's how the front of it goes. Yeah, that's the front. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah boy. Yeah. So then the next one is the new Green Day album, Savior. Oh, hold on, Renee. Did you know you? I got you 200 subs purely by promoting you incessantly on the Jazz Moms last night? A thank you would be nice. Thank you. I was okay. going to say oh. it anyway. I would uh, thank you for yeah. um, supping me, uh, subscribe me, whatever you want to call it. I now, appreciate it. Uh, keep on, uh, give me the... Oh, hold on, Renee, Renee, Renee. Loki is, Loki is requesting that you since he helped you get all these subs if you could do a video of full body shot he wants to see what you got oh stop it. it's not going to be sexy keep going renee show the records i'm not gay stand up and do a little turnaround show us your outfit not that there's anything wrong with that all right no it's nothing wrong to be gay no yeah no no it has nothing to do it's not sexual he just wants to see you. there you go there you go, Loki. All right. Loki, now settle down. Write down. I'm trying to get music and records. 
Okay, Renee. Let's keep showing records, man. I want to see records. Black Sabbath. Okay. Rob, thank you. Rob, Make thank sure you. You want to get shut down again? Oh, hey. Hey. hey, also, hold on. Sarah, that was for you. That's better than oh. ADK. <laughs> Let's get records going. Holy smokes. That was hot. All right. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Is, did you just get the one record, Renee? <laughs> Renee, you're muted now, Renee. That's better? Yeah. yeah, Renee. Did you buy more than one record? Or is it just the one? Yeah. No. <laughs> Give me the big screen. All right, buddy. Here we go. Okay, this is a new Green Day uh, yes. album. Uh, hey, I, has anyone uh, ever, has anyone listened to that? Because I've been hearing here. people yeah. said it might not be a good album. Has anyone? Heard I that I album? listened to it on uh, Apple Tunes and I liked it. Okay, so that's good, that's Bob. all that matters. Yeah. Has anyone exactly. heard the new? Has anyone heard the new Slater Kinney record? No. One, one more. Sorry, Massey. I got one more. Yeah, it's Renee's time, Massey, please. Excuse me, Mr. Fancy Pants. All right, <laughs> this is great. Uh, uh, offspring. Yeah. yeah. The later, uh, uh, later in the uh, years, uh, I think in the 90s or 80s. Um, yeah. This is made in Canada. Uh, I do now, too, uh, GD. So I listened to this on uh, yeah. Apple Tunes and I liked it, so I decided to buy it. I got one other Offspring. Yeah. Uh, so now I got two Offspring LPs. You got more than me. I only got one. Yeah. So and hey, I, you I know, just this just came in from Loki. He said, "Renee, you're pretty fly for a white guy." <laughs> oh, I smoke. that's incredible. Yeah. Thank you, but. I just want to tell everybody thank you to subscribes. Yeah. Subscribe me. Uh, yep. The ones who did, the ones who didn't. Oh, well, you lost. Yeah, it's your loss. This, so, I had so much fun creating content and doing videos. What, do you have any ideas what your next one might be, Renee? Uh, I think I'm going to show my 80s. 80s. Yeah, the 80s tag. That's going on right now from... Why Stanley. don't you show your pants, a, a, all your pairs of pants? Do a whole yeah. video on your pants. Hey, Mazzy, can you show your pants from the 80s? You still have those. Right? I could show my underwear. No. Oh, no. 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 Fuck no. Oh, no. Just oh, kidding. No. He's kidding. Holy smokes. Hey, I wouldn't hey, do hey, that. Hold on, Rachel. I wouldn't do that to Sue. Yeah, poor Sue. J J B Play Five for a White Guy is Offspring. Come on. Yeah, Play Five White Guy. You're thinking of the song. Don't walk away, Renee. They have Renee salad dressing too. Yeah. Oh, what 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 kind of salad dressing is that? Oil and vinegar or water and oil. You know, Bill Kay used to always say nice things to me, but now he just like says all, and he just throws shit at me. He's I become very surly recently. It's because I haven't visited my uh, half brother in a while. Well, is that no, is? Mazzy, just open the window and wave to him. That's all he wants. Uh, when he found out I was a raging liberal. Don, you're gonna come up and say hi. It's Saturday. Mark Lassman, he speaks for so many AGKs angry that Renee has more subs in four days than he has in total. Listen, Plus, he is angry. just growing fast. Anthony's medium is more on Twitch, where Anthony's fame is being built. Okay, it's hey, up. Hey, Lassman, I thought it was uh, for number one. Anthony AGK thinks you're number one, Lassman. JB, you're Mark? so right about that. I've seen it before in the vinyl community. The only other time that where I saw a young channel do like this was James Oe, Sir James Ono, Bowie Sinatra, Lenny White Lennon. Absolutely, he is that guy. Well, that guy, he's, that he's 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 doing great. His channel is continuing to go nuts, and uh, well deserved in my opinion. Quite frankly, he's a good guy. I love James. 
He's doing good, and he's just uh, he's just on a growth uh, thing. It's uh, fantastic, Renee. You are like Ichiban. Okay, Ichiban. that is fantastic. That's Japanese for top tier. What's that? I, I enjoy recording myself too on the stream. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's it, uh, is that your YouPorn Hub uh, app? Oh, can you give? Can you give Mazzy a link to it? That's a hurtful comment, Chris. Very hurtful indeed. Um, AJK, are you going to, when's it going to be your last video? Uh, when is it going to be your final? This is it. I've had it. I've done. I tried to do what I could. February. On the anniversary of my stream. I'm Wait a like, second. Oh. I thought you've had like a bunch of farewell tours, or you're like Elton John, where it's like every five years is a farewell tour. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, a year ago I thought about, about keeping my channel another year, and so the year is almost up. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Whatever you guys do, just don't do those fucking things. The big channel announcement in your headline on your uh, thumbnails. I hate that. Like, really. Oh, thank you, Mazzy. That's my new video. Big channel announcement. <laughs> Big channel announcement. I just parked no, the car. No. The I got a parking space in San Francisco today. Big oh. channel announcement. Um, I'm going to go search Mazzy's channel for big channel announcement. I'm on I don't know if have one. Yeah. Too many, there's too many VC channels now. It's just it's just becoming noise, and I feel like I'm just disappearing into the noise. Of okay, people. now why is that? Well, what is this self-piteous uh, cry of uh, of sorrow that's emanating from you? All the no, other channels seem to be having fun and embracing it. Videos. I'm getting tired of making hey, videos. Uh, I've been okay, feeling that. Wow. Can AJK uh, give us his top five channels that he's better than? And I'm not better than anybody's channel. Let's They're be basically real. all of uh, you, uh, Nick, 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 I'll have a uh, egg salad sandwich, please. That not offered on the menu. I have Can't a poor boy. I don't want any secret sauce. Just some uh, mustard, yeah. please. No onions. <laughs> no onions. No with onions. mustard. I'll, no onions. Come on. I'll have the girl. I'll you have the girl onions. Fries. Yes, of course. Uh, okay, grilled grilled onions. And, uh, there you yeah. go. Okay. <laughs> what would you like to go with mustard and onions? Hey, yeah, I can now, splurge for a little more, Mazzy. Oh, well, <laughs> hey, um, uh, I don't know. Do, do you have uh, uh, pastrami or corned beef? I have corned beef, a very good corned okay, beef. Corned Absolutely. beef. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, corned oh, beef. No God. mayo because it wouldn't uh, be kosher then. But, no. But, it's, but, it's, but, it's, yeah. hey, Absolutely. How much do you, how how much do you spend though, for yeah. coffee? Like yeah, an industrial size breakfast. coffee for your business. Uh, I want to go breakfast. Eight dollars a pound. Oh, there you go, AGK. Got moved to the state. That's an eight, you at eight dollars US. That translates to what? Fourteen here. Yes. Do you do you buy it grounded or do you grind your own coffee? Let's just go to. No, I buy it ground. I'm not. I'm. I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm a teetotaler. So what what so do you I've charge heard, for a what do you charge for a cup of coffee in your place? Uh, it's two fifty nine. It's a full full serve sit down restaurant. No, yeah. and do you get a refill for free or pay for refill? Oh yeah, no, there's refill. I'm just curious. Within, the difference, you know. Yeah, I understand. With it, what I call within reason. Yeah. <laughs> There are people in the world that aren't reasonable. So if if uh, <laughs> Rachel came and kept saying, "Susie, can you get me another coffee?" like five times, you wouldn't you'd you'd cut her off probably after the third. Well, if Susie was working for nothing, sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, actually, she is working for nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, my my father, God bless his soul. As always said, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Wait, I needed to ask Mark Lastman. Bring, Mark bring, Lassman. Bring, bring, bring it, don't put it in. Bring it to me. Bring, 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 Mark Lastman, you can't go to the old days to Carnegie Deli or Katz Deli, and you can't get mayo on those sandwiches at, in, oh. at the Jewish delis in New York. So what are you talking about? That mayo is kosher with meat? I don't think so. Well, uh, no, well, you're not. Are you a true practicing? No, I'm not kosher at all. Okay, not, well, I didn't no, think so. No, <clears throat> there's no dairy in. No, I, mayo. I went. Yeah, I, but well, it actually, eggs, dairy. eggs are in mayo. So yeah, that's. I, I, I went to the second. Oil avenue. And egg. The, first, the first time I went to the Second Avenue Deli in uh, on the Lower East Side, I had a pastrami sandwich and I asked for a glass of milk and I felt like an idiot because of course they won't yeah. serve. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, 
See, now New York, you get a lot more ethnic, more like a, traditional. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I found that ethnicity, ethnicity depends on the region in which you're in because every nationality is different across the world, no matter where the original nationality began. Right. 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 Yeah, exactly. But, uh, oh, Rachel, beautiful tour. I loved it. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Seriously, Sue's feeling because she dropped a record, right? You can't drop records. For anybody, don't drop <laughs> Why not? You got triples and doubles of everything. Don't I worry know. about it. Did you drop it out of the cover? Did she drop it, it out of right the cover? On the, right on the floor, the linoleum. What band? Them. What band? Uh, it was my Bugs record. My oh, beloved Bugs. You got I Bugs know. in your linoleum? What's <laughs> that one? Uh-oh. What's uh -oh. that? Uh-oh. Okay, you're done good. Don't don't cry. You're doing good. Well, now, no now you got now you got Sue crying. Look, I know because I get you know don't try. I'm very sensitive. Don't. But I love you. I love you. Wait, you put up you put up with Rachel and you're sensitive. Uh, <laughs> I love that nasty look you gave her. I tell you, man, don't fuck with my records. Okay, I'm very serious about my records. I take my record collecting very seriously. All right, Renee, you got that Green Day with the grenade there, Lamp. Yeah, Isn't American uh -oh. Idols. How how you pronounce it? Idiot. Yeah, American idiot. Idiot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just got this this week. So I'm I'm starting my Green Day a collection too. <laughs> <laughs> Good Green Day. We love Green Day. Yeah. Another 80s uh, album. Yeah. 90s and stuff. 90s, actually. Yeah. Oh, 90? Yeah. Green okay, Day's thank in you. the 90s there, Renee. Okay, thank you for the information. No, we always got it here in the vinyl community. There's always still, in, still in elementary school in the 80s. <laughs> uh, oh. I don't think the Trumpy Bears. Trumpy Bears love Green Day. They're our favorite band. Wait, uh, what? The video is just okay. Bad production. There's Sarah. Sarah, you done good yesterday. Big Sean. Uh, everybody loved you. And uh, everybody, this is our friend Sarah. And if you're interested in girls, some of you have actually expressed an interest. What is a girl? Can you talk to them? Do how? What do you do? And so this is one here. She's a raging tomato type one. Hey, Racer, how you doing? Racer Records. Uh, to play part in the Beatles tag. It's so good to have Racer, Racer here. And uh, Racer's getting a wrench. Absolutely, Racer. He's hidden <laughs> right in behind all those uh, things, you know, the heart, love hearts and stuff. They're a little, oh, for the love of God, there we go. Racer, welcome to the show. I'm going to give Racer a, a shout out here too. Racer Records. Records. Boom. And we're going to give him a link. I love Snoopy. He's got 170 subs so far. And maybe we can get him a couple more vinyl community. This is Racer Records. Racer Records right here. Boom. Oh, okay, hold on. Sorry. That, this is a link to Racer Records. New channel. Uh, well, new-ish. Uh, my little place in the YouTube vinyl community just want to take part in the fun. He goes, some longer episodes time to time. Plan to do a series called Racers Fast Five. <laughs> Uh, he goes, he's got some mentors, Frank Landry, uh, Channel 33 and 3rd, Frank from Canada, Abigail DeVoe, of course, DeVoe, very, a great channel, Dylan over at Noble Records, Jazz Bums recently just hot off an interview with uh, Dylan, and the lovely, the incomparable Melinda Murphy. So this is great, and uh, great to you, you're allowed to come up and talk about your channel and promote it if you have any interest in doing that. Rachel, oh, ahead, bro. yeah, the Dylan came by the jazz bums last night. He was in the stream. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Invite yeah. coffee, yeah. yeah well, you fresh out the interview with him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed the stream last night. Yeah, we just don't have any contact. Uh, this channel with Dylan, go ahead. There uh, <laughs> I love this the is a uh, British duo, what's well, a band, but there's a man and female and male singer. Uh, they're called Bar Italia. <laughs> I think this is their fourth album called The Twits. Indie, kind of post-punkish, really a good record. On my Instagram, I did a little clip. Uh, uh, this is a fantastic record. Is and then punk, um, rock? punk rock. There's been a couple of uh, reissues, Light in the Attic, 
of um, Lee Hazelwood. You know, Lee Hazelwood uh, was producing all those Nancy Sinatra records like Boots Are Made for Walking. He all of a sudden gets up and leaves Hollywood and moves to Sweden. This is Cowboy in Sweden. There's some recordings he started with uh, Nancy Sinatra on here. This is one. And then this other Lee Hazelwood also right there. So, you know, that low kind of voice with some Velvet Morning and Jackson that he did with uh, Nancy Sinatra. You don't get you don't give a shit about this. It's okay. So. What we love, I got Nancy and like in my own collection. You son of a bitch. Please, I it's love. Okay. Them. I you know, love. It's, I love Lee too. If it's Lee not great. if it's not Prague or Led Zeppelin or Beatles shit, you don't give a fucking crap. Oh, okay. Lee, oh, Lee. excuse me, sensitive <laughs> bunny. Between you and AGK, your sensitivity is too much. AGK is right. Everything he says about you is totally right. Okay. Did you oh, did, did you get this, Norman? Did you get oh, this, boy. Norman? I have that. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is a spectacular collection. Yeah, it's a great comp. Yeah, it, it is really, really, really good. And the, the photograph inside, I think, in the gatefold. Do you have it open yet? The, uh, I no, I haven't. That one. But it has a great I think book. It's the gatefold. You should see the gatefold there. The book Nancy is Sinatra is not a irre irrelevant vinyl outsider. That, why AGK do you think he takes the, the pictures? He doesn't drool at him. I have the what they call it fire truck. Fire, yeah, now, fire. Uh, Nick, what sandwich do you suggest to go with that album? Look, Massey. Oh, I I yep. definitely say the uh, Critics Club. Absolutely, it's got everything yeah. on it. Yeah. Look yeah. at that, Massey Sinatra. Cool ass music. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, but the book the book that comes with this the book that comes with this is spectacular, huh? The book. Yeah. 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 But there's a, one great there's one great spread in that. Is that the opening one? Is that the uh, let me find it. I mean, there's more than one, but there's one in particular. Yeah, there's a lot of un, a lot of unreleased photos in this book, and a lot of yeah. photos. All right, never see what this is breaking news. Norman, what do you know about Brooklyn Rabbit Royt or the Synagogue Secret Tunnel? Um, I don't synagogue know anything. Secret I don't think, tunnel. Lisa, I don't think I know about that. Is that the one you're thinking of with Lee Hazelwood, or no? No. Um, yeah, the one with yeah, the this. Okay. I love for, for, for Renee. Renee, do you want to read this comment? Go ahead, Renee. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll read it for you. Read your tomato. I wasn't on the show, but I just want to tell you you're a beautiful woman there, Sarah. Do you like 63-year-old men? Because that might be Renee could be interested. Fantastic. Well, Renee, thank you for the compliment. You're silly. That's girl talk for me. I, she I think Sarah run. just issued a restraining yeah. order against Renee. So yes, Renee is going wild. Holy smokes! Um, things are just going crazy because Renee should do another alpha male Zoom call. Holy smokes! <laughs> this is the kind of thing. Hi, Scott. Welcome back. Things are blowing up big right now. The vinyl, uh, the vinyl tomato. Hey, there's a channel name available, the vinyl tomato. Anyway, it's available uh, any of you gals out there that want to make a vinyl tomato channel. It could be done. Nice heirlooms. Holy smokes! Uh, <laughs> Asi, do you get do you get self conscious when you see some of the boys get excited sexually in the vinyl community? <laughs> Why would I get so? <laughs> No, easy. I'm not, but I should be. I keep, I keep my uh, dating life off the YouTube's. Holy smokes! I think what? it's what? Yes, Rob. You know what? <laughs> what? I mean. Yeah, him and his what? alpacas. What? Yeah, me and my alpacas are not my alpacas, though. Oh, yeah. I know. I have, oh, but I have the visitation, the, uh, I have I visitation rights to the alpacas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as, as, I won't go there. But I don't the, have to uh, the, pay any kind of. Uh, uh, you know, what do they call it? Um, conjugal dead. visit. Well, I mean, with that's even worse. Good one. Wow. That's funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Hey, the thing with the uh, the rabbis in New York with the tunnel was that supposedly this tunnel was dug so that oh, they could uh, go to temple. About. Yeah, they could go to temple during the Got lockdown. It. Got it. Yeah. Um, I, for, I didn't realize what she was talking about. I heard about yeah. that. You know, I whatever you know I, if, it's if funny it's important the, to you, you'll do it about that, the only thing i'll say about that we in our lifetime all of our lifetime we've never been through a pandemic and if the government did nothing and more people died people would have been pissed if they did nothing 
So they kind of can't win. They, you try uh, something, you don't know what to well, do. Yeah, let's just try to lock down the world. Okay, well, let's it didn't work world. anyway. Oh, the yeah, lockdown. So uh, you know? I don't even want to go into let's it because on YouTube, yeah, with the that's, not, what, that's not what that's not what we were here for. Yeah. Well, no, but someone brought up the Brooklyn Tunnel, and that, YouTube, that's what, what it was about, about, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. Listen, Mass, you can't even talk about it on YouTube. It was, so, it was so they could Tunnel. practice their religion. I think That's Lisa all. brought up the Brooklyn now, Tunnel. Well, I don't now, Rachel, it, was, Rachel, it was about religion. Rachel, for me oh. to escape into Nioma, where's the tunnel? Where do I get the entrance for that? <laughs> yeah, everybody, this is Racer Records. He's on the way out right now. Please consider supporting this channel. And uh, Racer, anytime you want to come up here and be on the panel, we welcome people. You can talk about your latest video. What your channel's about, we provide that opportunity for people. We like to serve the vinyl community that way. But uh, that's great. And thank you for those that did subscribe uh, to Racer. And go check out his Beatles tag. He did a good job on it. So, Sarah, have you ever been on the vine? I mean, you, like tomatoes on the vine? There's a whole running theme with tomato. You know, tomato. Uh, hey, tomato. Sarah, tomato, 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 dating life off of the, the internet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are they always red? Are they sometimes green tomatoes? Are there fried uh, green tomatoes? Fried is, is a thing you here. Yeah. You, what are you insinuating to Sarah about? Okay, I love this here. I like Massey's hat. Yep. You know, I should have worn it yesterday. Yeah, I did. Very, I did. Hey, Sarah, it's very Freddy Krueger ish. Yeah. Holy. <laughs> Uh, it's you know it's fun because people are interacting learning about the records and stuff and everybody by the way today's title is beetly tones giving me the fomo i'm telling you we're looking for uh the beatles anthology on vinyl got it on cd i'd love to have it on vinyl uh beatles at the beeb i've got the the first one on cd love to have it on vinyl and also uh the beatles uh, let it be naked Got it on CD. So a lot of my Beatles stuff I bought on compact disc. I never did go over and 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 make the leap to vinyl on that. I just wasn't collecting vinyl when those albums came out. And now they are out of print. You're just not going to be able to get a hold of them unless you pay a premium dollar. And I'm not really uh, interested in doing that. Folks, here's a link to Racer Records from my uh, lovely so Boy, now, how are you doing following the trauma of the record drop? Oh, I'm good. Okay, good. Am I okay? Am I in I the doghouse? I don't hold my pain. Am I in the doghouse? I let my pain go. I could be in the doghouse. You're not community. in the doghouse. Uh, Harry goes, I have an underground channel, The Vinyl Potato. Harry, I remember The Vinyl Potato. You used to come here as The Vinyl Potato. I don't remember The Vinyl Potato. Vinyl please. Potato was here. It used to be oh. here. Yeah. Uh, the Red Vinyl Tomato Channel, Sarah. She could rebrand and get a vinyl community channel going uh okay uh chauncey goes 40 i'm going to subscribe to you because you don't have any content at all uh okay stop it loki i don't want you causing trouble for renee don't listen to loki renee's got a great channel it's going great everybody subscribe to johnny too do both uh i love this from renee vinyl raging tomato can I be your Superman? Asked Renee, and he's got a <laughs> Superman hat and everything. Renee, I want to like, see him leap off a tall building first. It sounds like you're oh, getting no, don't a little that. sweet <laughs> on uh, her. Yeah. Oh, wait, that came out wrong. That yeah. did come out wrong. Don't I am worried Renee is horny as my Holy shit, what a comment. That's horrible. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Right. Oh, oh guys, you you got to You got to put I a suit this. on. You should talk with she John. I subscribe to Renee and, and Johnny. It's equal love. Equal love for both boys. She expects a man Johnny, in a suit. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at this. Yes. Okay. He subscribed to you, Johnny. Holy shit! Everybody's a mess. You're muted. This is the perfect moment to bring back a Little Feet record again. Okay. Yeah, waiting on Columbus. There you go. There's the vinyl hey. tomato. Hey, tomato. is Mazzy trying to say Little Feet, Big Hands mean something? Yes. Yeah. It's a good album. It's a tomato album. Show me an album. This could have been the vinyl tag. Show me an album with a tomato on it. Mm. Yeah. That'd be a good one. 
Mass, is that the OG or the recent reissue? Um, this is the reissue, but I do have an OG as well. Do a Renee Q and A. A Q and A with Renee for yeah, yeah. to what end? To learn more about Renee. Okay, well, we what don't do you okay? Know anything about Renee? So take it away. Go ahead with. Oh, Renee. Wait, wait, I, I, can I, Renee? So can I ask the first question? Okay, okay, go All ahead. Right. Hey, Renee, know. Renee, Renee, have you ever killed a man? When did you get on out on parole, Renee? Oh, one at a time, one at a time. Rob. Yesterday. You you got what, out of parole. Was your... Okay. You have you killed a man? No. Okay. Do you have you killed a Rob. woman? Okay, just yes or no answers, okay, Renee? Okay. Okay. Do you own an offshore company? No. Okay. Anyone else? Next. Have you leaped a tall building in a single bound? Now, nope. Nick, that's just, just in my dream. Go back, go back to making sandwiches, please. <laughs> Jesus. I'm, I'm kind of so I, I think from now on, I'm going to run the show more. I'm, I'm I got some to... chicory <laughs> for you. Okay, Renee? check. Uh, okay, Renee, are you a Trumper? Uh, what's that? And that's like you do you like you like the trumpet? Boo. Yeah, and a boy. Oh no! Woo! I'm a liberal like Massey. Yeah, yeah. you're like Massey. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we all we all have our faults. <laughs> how, about, how about the tomato? How about the tomato yeah. record label? Here we have nice. the tomato record label. There you go. Uh, Hey, hey, Nick, do you put tomato tomatoes records. on your sandwiches? Tomato, tomato records. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jorge, Jorge I prefer Sanchez. not to when they're not in season, but uh, tomato record label. Look at Massey doing the power of love. He's floating love flowers. <laughs> love hearts. I should be doing fantastic. It. Folks, woohoo, another <laughs> liberal hero, Rachel. Right, Rich? Absolutely. <laughs> I love all these tomatoes, says Sarah. Mm. Fantastic. Well, listen, folks, we've been here for almost three and a half hours or three. 50, three hours, 50 minutes, a little over time. It's a good show. Uh, I'm going to be back tomorrow. We'll do the regular show again tomorrow. Everybody go watch the, especially Massey, go watch the room tour. It's a, it's my most creative, and I've done a lot of creative videos. But, Sue, I think. You have? There. How come yes, you haven't posted them? Holy smoke. And they said he couldn't drum. Look at him go. Massey, you did great on the drums, by the way. It was a great moment there. Uh, recruit for posterity. Fantastic. I want to thank everybody for watching the show. Sarah, welcome back. Good to see you in the peanut gallery. Renee, thanks for being here. Congratulations. You're welcome. Thank on you. Incredible channel growth, my friend. You are going viral. You've got 900. Oh, my God. At the end of the show, 933 subscribers. You've got even more Ooh. now. You yeah. are taken down AGK. What and are you going to do I'm with all that power, power Renee? Power. That's all, you know. What are you going to do with all that power? Yeah, wait, Renee's wait, hold on a second. I got, I got to say this. I got to say this. In what world, in what planet, no offense, yeah. Renee, does yeah. Renee have more subs than the tomato? Well, it's because this is a vinyl community. We're so, and hers is more nebulous as uh, the manager. Yeah, but I mean, you know, basically a woman all has to do is say hi and she gets 10,000 subs on YouTube. <laughs> hey, Rick, so far, uh, I think yeah, I'm going to tell it works. Be, I'm Rachel starting to inspire me a lot. You know, Tomato, hey, you need hey, to do, right a, do an ASMR channel and you get way more subs. There you go. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the vinyl. That. Hey, Massey, I'm, the vinyl I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. Did you okay. sub me? I did sub you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I and I got the check. It hasn't cleared yet, though. Remember, you got you liberals got to stick together and support one another in difficult yeah, times. Yeah, Massey, me, liberals. Hey, what, what hey. State, where do you live? What's where do you live, Renee? Uh, Ontario, Canada. Oh, you can't vote. Okay, I was going to sign. Oh, no. As a, as a Canadian, he can, but only for the Democrat Party. He's allowed to vote in the Democrat election. Congratulations. I you knew that was coming. Yeah. Your, <laughs> your vote is welcome. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Good joke. Good joke. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye All for right. now. Thanks, Rob, for helping. Love you, AJK.